Yes, a very good afternoon to everybody. Thank you for joining us on our third annual bingo day uh, here at the Juma Private Game Reserve. As you can see, I have started with a awesome sighting with impalas just taking shelter here in the shade. Of course, today is quite hot. It's about 35, 36 degrees Celsius. And uh, yeah, I'm sure dams are going to be definitely pumping around here. And I'm sure we are going to find a lot of things. Uh, the Juma Private Game Reserve. Good afternoon everybody, my name is Cedric Dold and behind the camera on Rusty we've got Gert. So thanks for joining us and as you can see I've got my bingo shirt, my lucky safari. So I have had two days of luck, let's see if I can get a third day of uh, a bingo day for myself. But yes, around here today it is going to be uh, up there with the Tess, she's going to be on w uh, Wendy and uh, up there in the Pride Lands we've got Chris and O. Owen, and of course down there in the Eastern Cape at Amakala, we've got Rishala and BK, and up at Madikwe in the northwestern area, Lauren and Darby. So yes, it's going to be a fantastic day, I am really looking forward to it, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to start off, uh, of course, getting this first one marked down, and uh, we're going to take a look. So how it works, uh, we've been playing for the last uh, uh, few days. The main things is, as you can see, we've got our bingo boards. So all of us all around has got bingo boards. And we've got, of course, all the names, different names of animals on the board. So we've got five down, five across, and five horizontal. So if you see an animal like I've got now, the impalas, of course, uh, we're going to get a confirmation on those impalas that the viewers, if they have seen the impalas, they will let us know. And then I can see where's my impala here. And then I'm going to mark that impala down. So what I need now is I'm thinking we try and get five down, five across, or five horizontal. So my plan today is this one. I think I'm looking at this strategy because dwarf mongoose, I'll be able to get at Trias Dam. Elephants has been plentiful all over the show. Very hot day, so definitely going to head around to the dams, maybe t towards twin dams. Giraffe, it's gonna, it could be very difficult. I think giraffe is going to be a tough one. Crested barbet, we have got a crested barbet nesting around twin dams as well. So I'm going to try and see if I can fill uh, this uh, lineup. But I know that uh, Lauren, Chris, Tess, and uh, Trishala is definitely out to uh, uh, beat me this afternoon because, as I said, I've <laughs> I had one yesterday and the day before, and I've been very lucky with that. And I'm hoping that we're going to be another winner today. But yes, well, we are going to just sit a little bit longer here with these beautiful impalas while they're taking refuge in the shade. And let's see what the weather is like today. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so glad Cedric knows that we are coming for him this afternoon. It is very hot, 33 degrees Celsius, 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And unbelievably, all the animals are in the sun. I've started my afternoon with not one, not two, but three animals on my bingo board for the afternoon. Now we are still right next to camp, so if you do see any man-made structures, I do apologize. We do have to sleep somewhere, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, luckily for me, a lot of the animals seem to be right outside camp today. Now we've got kudus, we've got impalas, and we've got water bucks. But first, before I go into all of that, let me introduce myself. My name is Tess. I'm going to be your guide on safari here for the afternoon. I'm bringing my A game as well, and hopefully it's an A plus as opposed to Cedric's A. Behind the camera today is Panda. I've got my stickers at the ready. I am so keen to go. We've got a great plan for the afternoon. It's not just going to be with these three species of animal. I've got a whole board to fill today, and that includes going to the water holes. But let me tell you a little bit about our animals that we have in front of us today. What are we starting with? A kudu. A beautiful female kudu. There's in fact three female kudus here and they came out of nowhere. We saw the water buck, then the impalas materialized and then the kudus came along and she is looking gorgeous. 
the largest antelope that we get here in terms of height and you can see they're very elegantly designed full of muscle and tone she is looking a little bit pregnant she's got a slightly rounded belly and these are predominantly grazers oh, sorry browsers i'm confusing myself just getting excited now i'm glad they found a shack patch of shade <laughs> not a shatch of shade a patch of shade so that they can keep themselves cool today even the other one she's standing off on her own there in the one patch of shade oh melody i am 100 percent playing catch up today the last two days i struggled to find a genet I mean, sorry, a jackal and a leopard. So I played strategically. My first two days, I used some pretty difficult bingo cards. Today, I've got a little bit more of a generic one, but there are still some serious challenges on here, like a giraffe and a rhino, even a tree, a gama, and a bush baby. So it is gonna be challenging. I've also got things like leopard, lion, hyena, monitor lizard, all of these things. But the first three are definitely these impalas. The waterbuck you can see in the background, those nice white rings on the bum. There's a massive herd here, probably 12 or so, that are slowly moving down towards Gari Dam. And then the impalas with the kudus. So I really have started off with a bang. Please do remember, we do need to confirm those sightings with you. So as soon as you've seen it and you're happy, please let us know and then we can mark them off. But I'm super excited to see so many different herbivores together because we don't often get the waterbuck in particular up on quarantine. So that's really cool to see them intermingling with not only the impalas but the kudus as well because what a cool way to start the afternoon. Thank you everybody for confirming my sightings. I'm going to be adding to my board. Let's do the waterbuck first because that's the first one panda and I spotted, that big herd of waterbuck. And then we shall go next to the impalas because we saw the impalas next. And then we shall go to, last but not least, the lovely lady kudus because they were the last ones we spotted. They materialized out of nowhere. And I think that puts me in the bingo lead. <laughs> Okay, now I need a few more, but in all seriousness, we're going to play catch up on a real, real note today because I have to win today. I cannot let Cedric lead for three days. We've only got today and tomorrow left, so I have to take at least today, if not today and tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I'm going to head down towards Gari Dam to try and get a few more on my board, but I'll send you over to Cedric to see if he's got anything new for his board. All right, so we've got a Steenbuck. So I've got a Steenbuck here on my uh, card as well. But yes, I know that Tess is definitely out to get me. So there is a target on my back, but that's fine. But as I can just witness this beautiful little antelope, it's known as a Steenbuck. And they are one of our smallest antelopes that we do have around. Unfortunately, it just has gone behind. Okay, there's a little bit of a view of it. Just went behind there. And very much solitary compared to your impalas that we did witness earlier. Um, your steenbocks are most of the time by themselves and they'll have a little small territory for themselves as well and uh, the male and the female will also have a monogamous relationship so they will be in the same area with each other but yes a very nice little antelope and I love watching them but uh, they are so quick when they take off with those very well developed hind legs they are very very quick um, but I should call a steenbock because it looks like a stone, the coloration of a stone and they freeze like a stone if there's any predators around. You can see the little male, you can see that little sharp horns, very straight and sharp horns there, but yeah, he's just moving along here. All right, so we're going to go to my card quickly. I'm just going to show you exactly what we've got here and I'll see if I can get a confirmation from Final Control if everybody has uh, kind of confirmed that sighting. As I can say, the Steenbock is on here. So the Steenbock, I'm going to think Steenbock, Saddlebus Stork, Niola, Hippo, Leopard. That's going to be a tough one. So I'm just going to put the Steenbock there. There it is. Okay, so this is the two roads that I'm really looking at. Dwarf Mongoose, Elephant, Giraffe, Crescent Piper. Now Saddlebus Stork. We have seen Saddlebus Storks around here. Uh, Niola, Hippo, and a Leopard. Leopard's going to be a tough one. But that saddlebull stalk has been seen around uh, Buffalo Cutline, uh, not Buffalo Cutline, Buffalo Dam, Gary Dam. So we are definitely going to try for that. 
But uh, yeah, these little stand books are very cute. I think they have moved now into an area that we can't see them. I'm just trying to see if I can, I can get them again here. But they are very sketchish. They don't really hang around. Oh, and... Uh, <coughs> Jake, yes, definitely. Well, fantastic. Thanks, Hat. We got a lilac breasted roller, and I've got a lilac breasted roller on my card. So, this is one of the most prettiest birds that we have in the area. Very colorful, and it's got that electric blue colors when they do take off, and it's a very kind of uh, uh, photographed bird in uh, South Africa. Oh, wait, it's got a nest there. Let's just see. Yeah, it's got a nest. Maybe we've got a lilac breasted roller nest here. And they do nest in these hollowed out uh, trees. Yes, look at this. This is a brilliant find. Oh, it's struggling to get in. Oh my word. That is brilliant. So now we know where a lilac breasted roller's nest is. So it just shows you, just sitting here, you can witness something like that. And now definitely is one to look out for every single time we come past here. So excellent. Okay, so I'm going to just show you quickly on the card if everybody's confirmed that uh, uh, one. So we're going to have a lilac breasted roller here. Okay, well, I think uh, Gwen just uh, didn't confirm it yet. I just want to wait for FC. Thank you very much there. Confirmed. As much as you might not be able to see it, I have got another animal for my board. Let's wait and see if he comes out into the open. Yes, I think in front of that marilla tree we might get lucky. We have got a long distance visual, but a visual nonetheless, of a big elephant bull. <clears throat> He's possibly come from Gauri Dam area because we're on our way down to the dam and spotted him all the way across the valley. I know that you can't really confirm something you can't see, but I'm going to trust that he's going to walk out from behind that bush at some point. I'm really hoping that he does, but I think you saw part of his back at least. So I was hoping he might be down at the dam because I was wondering if there might be elephants on such a hot day. But I think he's already come and gone in the heat of the day and now he's moving off to find something to feed on. Oh, come on elephant, you've been such a a hide-and-seek professional here. Oh, he looks like he's busy feeding. I think he might have found a spot of shade. I can kind of see his ears moving. Now for a big bull like him on his own, he doesn't really need to be in a group. He doesn't need to be with other elephants unless he wants to be in a bachelor herd. Yes, there he comes! Or unless he wants to follow a breeding herd to try and start mating with the female. We haven't seen any other elephants on the opposite bank, so I take it he's on his own. And that's okay. He's more than big enough that he doesn't need to be, um, you know, protected by anybody else. He's more than capable of looking after himself. Oh, look at those tusks. Nice and white and clean. Yay! Hello, elephant. All right, now I'm happy. Now that's at least a decent elephant sighting. But I've got a big decision to make if this is confirmed because I've got two columns, well, a column and a row with elephant in them, and both of them are pretty good bets. So which one? Which one do I tickle first, Panda? It's confirmed, thank you. I don't know which one to tickle first, but I'm going to choose one and I'll put it on. Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Amakala where we are looking at some water buck that are having a great day up on this hill grazing about a little bit and I'm quite pleased to see them because they are on my bingo board and I'm very very excited for bingo today because you see Cedric has been talking smack he has been saying things I don't know if it's related to the bingo or not but he was saying things about his muscles and how strong he is and how he can pick up a car and he's got more bigger muscles than BK and Paul combined. So we just thought that this time round, who's got 
the muscles because we are going to win this bingo. Oh, BK, BK is telling me turn a bit so I can show you my muscles. Look at this, Cedric, and also BK would like a formal apology on behalf of his muscles, please. <laughs> it's me, Trishana, everyone. And yes, I'm very muscular today because we're going to win bingo. It's from, this is from picking up my bingo board all the time. Always picking it up, strategizing, strategizing. BK is obviously on camera with me. We have to be careful that BK doesn't break the camera as he's moving it with his big muscles today because we are pumped. So we're going to take it a little bit uh, more strategically this time and we're going to look at where we move through first and last and all of that kind of stuff. So we move into the basin usually last because that's furthest away from us and we have to go through this grasslandy area first. So we thought we'd get the water buck and the black wildebeest first and we'll take this line down. But we can also get blessbok around this area. Rock hyrax, we're not going to get in this area. So we're, we're being very strategic this time and obviously having the muscles, that helps. It really does. Unfortunately, it might look a little bit intimidating to the animals and we don't want to chase them away. So I am going to uh, try to deflate myself before our next sighting. <laughs> but I hope that uh, Cedric got the message loud and clear. Anyway, that's just a bit of fun and games, but the whole afternoon is about is all about fun and games. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So yay, my water bug have been confirmed. They look very peaceful. And also because it's quite windy, it's something to take into account as well. We might find a lot of antelope gathering in areas like this. Anyway, let me send you over to Cedric. No, I'm sending you over to Chris in Pridelands who also ha works very hard at the gym. Well, Trishala, you have one on your board. I'm hoping to have two right now. Right, everybody, that is Kudu. So that is definitely one that is on my board. And I've got a very nice line on top that I'm targeting at the moment. So while we wait confirmation, and there's elephants right up ahead there. I can actually see them through the bush. Let's see if we can put them on. We can see the trunk there. <laughs> An elephant is also on my list. And it's on the same line as the kudu, so I'm in for a good one, yeah? I just need to get confirmation that you can see the elephant's trunk and you agree that that is an elephant. It's right through here. You can see it's trunk through there. You can see the ears moving. We'll go forward for the elephants just now. They are less than 50 meters up ahead. So perhaps let's head back to the kudu. But while we do that, my name is Chris, Odeon Camera. Here's the line I'm targeting for now for a fall. There's my kicker, leopard tortoise. Not great conditions for them, but I'm, 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 I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Right, back to the kudu. We'll go to the elephant just now. So let us know if you agree about the kudu that we see there. I'm just going to move a little bit forward here. Anybody seen the kudu? Is there anybody that can confirm? Got it. Just stay with us. Stay with us. That one's gonna come up right now. The elephants are right here. I'm hoping my signal will last. I just need to move like 10 meters or so. And then I will potentially have two. There we go. There's the elephants. There's the elephants. Odie's gonna be right on them now. There we go. Through the bush. Odie, tell me when you got a shot there. Ah, oh, there's a gap through the bush here. There we go. <laughs> Number two. Doing a lot better than yesterday. Already. And that is very clearly an elephant. I 
We are very excited. We're not even at our dam yet. So there were some buffalo. Remember, we saw them this morning. Let's see if we can't find them. That hopefully will be number three. Impala we'll find somewhere, I'm sure. So I'm really targeting at least a four line here. But then we will see what the rest of the board will do. Leopard tortoise, I have seen them moving around, drinking water at this time of day, so that's a possibility. But let's go to Leopard Dam. Well, we're going to go to Leopard Dam. You're going to go to Tessa to see if she's got another animal for her board. Oh, oh, Chris, I have something else for sure. I've caught up with the Egyptian goose family, the Gauri Dam. They are on the opposite bank, and it looks as though everybody's on a feeding mission. The adults are the only ones that keep stopping to look up occasionally. The chicks have not stopped feeding. They are in the water, they're out the water, they're up and down, but constantly those little beaks are down. And you can imagine, being a little three and a bit week old chick, it is very important to keep that protein and the energy coming in because otherwise, how are you going to grow? And they need to grow pretty quickly. They're very vulnerable. Now, luckily for me, this will add to my list. I'm just trying to count those chicks though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, am I counting wrong? I think this is like the fifth time that I've questioned my counting abilities <laughs> while I'm with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can only see seven. Why can I only see seven? Where's number eight? Number eight was here yesterday. Where's number eight? Maybe it's struggling in the grass behind a log. Oh yeah, I think it might be. I'm seeing something that looks like a chick, but further back, lying in the grass, but very well hidden, close to those logs. I don't know if that is a chick or if it isn't, but anyway, I think it is. I might be wrong, but I think it is. I think if I was these Egyptian geese, I would be sticking to the shade, but because they have that nice downy, fluffy feather coat, they can then use that to keep the hot air and the sun off of their body so they can trap air against the body and that then doesn't heat up too much and they can keep the sun off of the body to protect the skin because the skin is ultimately what's going to keep them either warm or cold. Thank you so much everybody for confirming that. Let me put it on my list sticker and put it there. Okay, so let me show you. I've strategically chosen there is my elephant, so one, two, three in a row, two in a row. And this one is lonely, the water buck's lonely. But if I can get hyena and leopard, I can pull this off. So hyena is what I'm going for next. But if I go towards Chitwa Dam, I can do hopefully another elephant, hopefully find a hyena, get a crocodile, and somewhere I'll try and find a giraffe. So let's hope that that works. But my next mission while I'm here at Gari Dam, I've been searching for a monitor lizard really like to get that one as well so we are going to reposition just now up onto the dam wall and see if we can get lucky there put that back behind my gear lever and go back to those baby egyptian geese i do want to try and see if that other one is actually a chick or if i'm seeing things one two three four five six seven Nope, still see it. Uh, I can't decide if the other one is a chick or not. It's in between all those logs on the floor, but I can't decide. Anyway, I'm going to go onto the dam wall and look for a monitor lizard, and I will send you to Cedric to see what he's got.
Yes, okay, I got a dwarf mongoose here on this termite mount. As you can just see on the side of it, you can just see the head popping out on the side. You can just see him looking at us. I'm sure everybody can see that head. That is one of the smallest carnivores in Southern Africa, a dwarf mongoose, and he is on my list. So I'm definitely going to claim it. You can see the head there. There's him. Oh, it's just gone in. I can see the movement there now. I'm just waiting for FC to say that the people did see it and all the viewers at home got to see the little head. It's popping its head out again. And of course, eating little insects, little insectivorous. There he is. Oh, he's been back in again. And of course, always foraging around this area of the termite mounds. So they use these termite mounds as their den sites. And the head popping out again. And uh, yes, definitely very cute little animals. And I think the rest of the family might be around here somewhere uh, looking for little uh, grubs, beetles, any kind of insects, and sometimes even something like uh, uh, your little uh, scrubbies. Some say it's a game of chance, luck, even divine providence. Others would call it your grandma's weekly fix. Yes, we are talking about bingo. Join us in celebration of World Animal Day. For the most gripping game of safari bingo to date, our naturalists will be going head to head on a hunt to spot the animals you have chosen. It's sure to be one for the book. Okay, another elephant, not part of the same group. Unfortunately, the elephant not. Oh, I only have one elephant listed on my card. But, however, there's two others that are listed on my board. Right, let's take a look at this bird. Very easy to identify. Blacksmith lapwing. With that characteristic black, white and grey coloration. And that is one that is on my board. It's a bit of an awkward one. It's got very, very far low down, so it's not the line I was targeting, but it could potentially open up a another potential line further down. So that is the lapwing. 
another elephant coming in. You come and drink. Yo, if I had more elephant blocks, I would have filled this thing up. <laughs> Only I have one elephant today. Here's the. See, we all had the lap wings. And then, while we wait for confirmation on that, a resident pair of Egyptian geese. Which is also on my list. Got confirmation of the lap wing there. Sure, we'll get confirmation of the goose just now. Yeah, they're always around, eh? This resident pair. Pair that are oh, monogamous. Lulu, hi there. Lulu wants to know if it's rare to find specific animals or multiple species in the same location. No, not at all. In fact, especially a water hole like this, it's common, especially this dry time of the year. Remember, we're out of winter now. But we are still in the dry period. Our dry period extends out of winter into our summer. Sometimes in October the rains will start, but sometimes not. So October has a tendency to be a very hot, dry month, normally. It's actually, in my opinion, oh, I've got a confirmation there. Oh gosh, there goes my sticker. Of my Egyptian goose. So I've got another nice line opened up here. So right, so there's the line I'm talking. We're gonna go and try and find those buffaloes. I'm sure we'll find Impala somewhere. That'll give us a fall. But pearl spotted outlet. I've got a I've got a plan. Warthog. If we can get another buffalo sighting, which is obviously a different one. You see, I've got a potential line opened up there as well. Hmm. Odie. We're gonna have to play this one. I think we're in business. We're in business today. Odie and I had a strategy meeting earlier. Okay, Cedric's just found something. Something with spots. So let's go over there. Yes, I'm still sitting here with uh, Marips here at uh, Treehouse Dam. How fortunate are we to have this beautiful young male leopard just resting in the shade, as you can see, panting quite quickly. And he is getting quite hot at the moment. And uh, we are at Treehouse Dam, if you're wondering where we are. And yes, how lucky are we? I've been really fortunate getting some cats over the last few days. And uh, definitely on a hot day like this, you would never think uh, you'll be finding a leopard anywhere around you. I think they'll be kind of tucked away in some shady, cool area. But yeah, he's definitely nice and open for us. So yeah, this uh, young male leopard is just over two and a half years old. A hyena. Sorry, just hearing hyena there to the south. Just this pointing to a direction you can actually hear some moaning and groaning of hyenas we're not too far from the hyena den so uh sorry Gwen, you i just heard leopard lover at the end uh, what is a comment or question there please Leopard lover, yes, definitely the cl uh, clown Marips. Eh? It is uh, one of one of my favourite uh, young males that's around. Yeah, he's absolutely such a gorgeous boy. I mean, look at that little tongue of his, always panting, and and a little tongue of his hanging off like a, like just a little bit out of his uh, mouth, and it looks so cute, absolutely adorable. So yes, I am happy to have this youngster yeah it looks like i've got tracks here on the road it looks like he went for a drink so he must have come from a little gary area i won't be surprised if he didn't come up from that side um, because i do have his tracks coming past me here towards the water area so if i had a little drink 
and now relaxing. So he hasn't got a territory at the moment. Well, let's see what he's going to do here quickly. Looks like he's picking up on a scent of something. You can see, maybe he's going to jump and hug the tree. Sometimes they do that just to leave, leave their scent behind. But uh, you can see he's definitely sniffing maybe a female that came past here, maybe another male. But you can see how he's leaving his scent on the quarry bush. But yeah, while we sit here a little bit longer, or oh, definitely longer with my ribs, let's head over to Tess. I think she's got another animal that she wants to mark down on her bingo board. I do, and it's purely thanks to Panda Bear. He has the most insane eyesight of anyone I think I've worked with. You might not be able to see it so clearly, but if you look carefully, that is a monitor lizard. It's a water monitor. Watch, uh, you can see kind of the head sticking out on the right hand side. Watch, you can see it moving and breathing. You can see the scales on the left hand side of the stomach and this is another one for my bingo board i'm so excited to me the only giveaway was the tail and panda still had to try and explain to me about 10 times where this monitor lizard might be in the tree now of course on a day like today it is so hot that the monitor lizards are in the shade not in the sun so it makes them 50 times harder to find at least because they camouflage so well in the shade. And that's because they are ectothermic. They cannot control their own body temperature, being reptiles. And so this monitor lizard is standing, kind of holding onto the branch in the shade so that it can try and keep itself cool on such a hot day. If it were to sit in the sun or outside of the water, the water's a good option too, but outside of the water and in the sun, it would have a bit of a problem because it would start overheating and so very cleverly, it's clinging onto the branch in the shade. Panda, can you show them the tail? Look, there you can see the kind of hanging shape of the tail in a bit of a, almost like a kudu horn. It's a bit of a swirl, this tail. And that was the, actually the only thing that I saw from a distance, only after Panda had explained 10 times to me where to find this monitor lizard. Devon, yes, monitor lizards, especially rock monitors, will sleep in trees. If there's any hollow in a tree, you might find monitor lizards living in there. Water monitors also tend to sleep in trees, but they don't necessarily have to go into the tree. They can sleep on top of it, particularly during the day. But at night, when they need to creep away from all the predators, then they'll find a hollow. And so that's why the log at Gauri Dam that hangs over in the corner is perfect for water monitors. Because they can find nice little gaps in the thickets there and hopefully into the tree itself. Now at places like Twin Dams, it might be a little bit more challenging. But it is still possible for them to find trees because there's many trees around. But they can also use termite mounds. They can use little hollows in the banks, anything like that. So anything that will give them a lovely amount of shelter. Thank you so much, everybody, for confirming my monitor lizard. Also said, well done, funding my ribs. I don't know how you pulled that one out the hat, but well done. Okay, let me put my monitor lizard sticker on. Sticker, sticker, sticker. Okay, so that gives me two, two, three, and two. And one. Just one lonely water buck and one lonely kudu. Okay, so we are definitely getting there. From here, I need to try and find hyenas, crocodiles, and giraffes, as well as another leopard. I don't actually know. I don't think I'm allowed to go to my ribs later when Cedric leaves. I doubt it. But <laughs> at least Cedric found a leopard. That was the one thing I couldn't do last night. And I know Cedric has the same bingo board that I had yesterday. So anyway, we're going to try and find some more elephants. We're going to try and find some well many things we still got lots to take off on the list but i'll send you back to cedric who's still with my ribs all right so just going to try and relocate on the other side yeah but definitely i'm not sharing my ribs thank you <laughs> here he comes down there he comes i'm just gonna sit here uh, it's going to park just uh, over this side. I think what happened is that uh, those uh, lap wings were making quite a racket on the other side. 
and giving his location away and he was getting a little bit a bit irritated with those uh, blacksmith lap rings so he decided to move a little bit he's just going to he's just standing behind that quarry bush at the moment so yeah this young male hasn't got a territory at the at this point of time he's still pretty much uh, in his mom's territory or his late mom tandy uh, he's still in her territory and uh, of course his father Molawati. i'm sure it's yeah, uh, i'll just have that uh, standing by. No negative. I'm not going to give you my position. Uh, um, thank you. Uh, uh, cheers, Dan. <laughs> Go a little bit forward. Uh, Benjamin, I'm sure it gets hot. Most animals will do, eh? I mean, if it's going to be a hot day, they're not going to just ignore taking in enough for water for themselves. I think it's very important. That's why water holes are so busy, so uh, so active. Look where Marips, where we found Marips this afternoon, next to our water hole. So I'm sure definitely on hot days, it's the same as us. If we are going to get, uh, if we are getting hot during the daytime, if you are running, if you are busy and it's very hot, you are definitely going to drink more water. Animals have got the same idea. Exactly the same idea. He's just sitting there. I wonder what he's going to do a little bit further from here. But it's so nice. I know that they... So we tried to track him down, not yesterday, the day before. Uh, the, he was around at uh, Chitwa uh, Lodge or Chitwa Dam area <coughs> in the drainage line, but we could not uh, find it. All right, I see. All right, we've got some scores coming with the day three updates quickly. I see uh, that's a Cedric two, Tess three, Chris two, Trishala one. I've got three. Is it three lines or three dots on a line? I'm not too sure what's happening here. Sorry, I'll just see. I've got three on a line here. But anyway, let's see. Hey, my boy, you're gonna come and have some water. Come and give us a beautiful view now. There he comes now. I don't wonder if he's not gonna take a little bit of a, a drink. No, he's slowly just moving away, yeah, I think, with all this activity with the birds, yeah. He doesn't wanna give his location away. the same thing for you said. I really, really do. Now don't tell Cedric this part. I'm taking advantage of the time that he is with my ribs to race to Chenda Pan and see if there's anything there and see what else I can find in the meantime. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. The comparative streak is officially on. It's on. It's on. Let's do it. I'm hoping my signal holds through the Cedric lots of questions about my ribs, please. Please send him lots of questions about my ribs. Keep him busy, please. <laughs> Have my back, come on. Have my back. Send him so many questions. <laughs> you have to send Cedric questions. <laughs> Elephants have been here, but probably yesterday. Don't see anything in Chela Pan. It's empty. Okay, let's continue. Okay. I'm going to the little pan system at Spaghetti Junction next. Using the section of the Mulawati, I'm looking for elephants. I'm looking for giraffe. I'm looking for rhino, buffalo, mongoose, more impalas, I <laughs> need so many things. 
Keep him busy. <laughs> oh, okay, there was a giraffe yesterday around Twin Dams. So I'm going to go towards Twin Dams and see if there's a giraffe there. Maybe I'll get lucky. Fingers crossed. Come on. Send lots of questions, please. <laughs> Everybody. Whenever I start a segment with hello everybody, it's usually because I didn't know I was live. <laughs> Just so you guys know. Um, as you can see, you're not looking at much. And that's because we were watching some really interesting behavior. Um, this young impala, male, little ram, uh, his horns was just starting to take on a cup-like shape. He was all alone here and was behaving quite erratically um, for obvious reasons. He's alone, it's really windy, he should be in an open area and uh, he should be in a herd, a bachelor herd, but he wasn't and he just, so he parked here and he saw us and he just sprinted. I haven't, I haven't seen an Impala sprint like that in a long, long time. It absolutely kicked it. Kicked up dust as it went along. And it was also following some warthogs. Um, I guess trying to get some company. But then the warthogs vanished and the Impala just sprinted. Anyway, I hope that I was live there because I'm not sure what, ha what happened, but I'm going to keep on driving. Oh, there he comes, there he comes. Yo, he's flying. Look at him. And he flew into somewhere else because I can't see him. Can you hear Gwen? Never, I can't hear Okay, sure. Uh, I'm going to explain the rules of bingo to you while we wait for this impala to come storming out from behind that bush. Wow, he came from nowhere. The rules of bingo are that you have to get, the guides that is, have to get five in a row across, so horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. They have to be seen and noticed by you, and then somebody in FC will say, hey, you're Impala, for example, has been noticed. And we have to do a five-minute segment on them. So those are the rules that are relevant to to you all and I guess to us in our segments too. So remember to mention, let it be recognized when we see something or when you guys see something so that we can get the sticker. And then the winner of Bingo, I have nothing. When the winner of bingo, or whoever the winger, winner of the bingo is, gets lots and lots of praise and our respect. I have no signal. Sorry everybody, comms are being very difficult, particularly for me, must probably be my muscles must probably be my muscles that were intimidating the comms um, but I completely can't hear things so it is windy but I I can't hear a thing anyway I hope that this impala comes out for us but it seems that he's he's moved into the thicket ah call failed for me oh well I'm all on my own everybody it's just you and me I've got no director Oh my goodness, do I even know if I'm live? Am I live? I'll always act like I am live because the last thing you want is to not act like you're live. <laughs> okay, I think our Mr. Impala is... Okay, uh, my director is now BK today. <laughs> We're going to move on, see if we can find any other antelope that are acting a bit strange in this windy weather and we're going to send you over to Cedric yesterday's bingo king all right yes 
sorry, I was also quickly chatting to uh, uh, Tess here. I was just trying to see what uh, uh, the ruling of uh, the game here. Let's see if maybe Tess can also make her way into this area and see if she can also come and view my ribs and mark down a leopard on her bingo board. And then I can continue searching for my last uh, two animals. One is a termite. Definitely I will be digging myself in one of the mounds to see if I can pull out a termite for you. And the other one is a honey badger. Hmm. Well, that one is going to be a little bit of a sneaky one, that. But you never know. There's always a possibility there. Or oh, actually, thinking about it, I've got so many lines going here. I want to see if that saddleable stalk that's been hanging around Gowrie Dam and uh, Biffleshook Dam. I think that saddleable stalk maybe might be at Biffleshook Dam. If I can get that, then I've got in there. It's also a hippo there. I can get the saddleable stalk and a hippo at once, and then I've just got Niala. But I know that I think once Tess gets this leopard, it's going to be pretty much tickets. But it's all right. It's a spirit of the game, I think. I think it'll be nice for testers to come here and take over from my ribs. Or from me with my ribs. <laughs> my ribs will continue and I'll remain here. <laughs> and then Tess will have actually view Gert and myself. Okay, that's getting a bit confusing now. But you can see is really enjoying a good old nap now. He's uh, yeah, in this inflow of a treehouse dam. And uh, I think he moved mainly he moved away from that dam area. I think too exposed there. As I said, those lap wings and even the Egyptian geese were going crazy around him. And you know, leopards, as soon as their cover is blown, they tend to move away from that area. As long as nothing is alarm calling around them, they are content then and then they're very happy. But if 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 anything, oh, sorry, was it out? Uh, all right, so uh, let's head over to Tess to see what she's got. Another success for me. Hi, Inez. Thank you very much for the kind offer, Cedric. I think it's only fair if I come to my ribs that Cedric comes to the hyena den, which is where I am, and Koa is busy having a lovely meal while Mama June's cub is trying to interrupt from the back. Look, it's running up and down. So I think that's only fair. Then Cedric and I can do a swap. Cedric can come to the hyena den, and I will go to my ribs. So if I want to fill my board, I actually need three separate hyena sightings. So this is going to be the first, if it's confirmed, of course, everybody loves the Juma clan. But in fact, we've got quite a few different hyenas here. Mama Swaz was here. She's just walked past towards where Cedric is. So I'm going to pop up with my ribs. We've got most of the cubs here, and I think Mama June is still in the entrance. Bye-bye, Corky. Mama June is still in the entrance, and she's one of the cubs and the other one was out here so that's given me hope that she still got both cubs yes hyena is confirmed okay guys this is where the secret comes in you can't tell cedric because we are going to swap but you can't tell him what he's in for here is my hyena one if I get my ribs, I get bingo. So Cedric and I are going to swap. He can come to the hyena den, and I'll go to my ribs, and I'll get bingo, but we can't tell Cedric yet. <laughs> I'll never hear the end of it. We can't tell Cedric yet, please. <laughs> we can't do it. <laughs> but now we'll enjoy the little tiny Mama June cubs, because both of them are out. How exciting is this? This is amazing. I was because I came past, and we only saw, oh, don't run into it. I only saw one of Mama June's cubs, but now that both are out, <clears throat> and Mbilo is enjoying this as well, being greeted by Mama June's cub. Hello, June bugs. Oh, this is wow. Wee, my Singita coming in for some action. Look at 
that excitement. Oh, this is amazing. Mama June looks like to have a look. So, so good. Oh, this makes my heart so happy. Oh, brilliant. Cedric has agreed to a swap. So we'll do that. Cedric can come and enjoy some hyena cubs too. I'm sure he's going to be just as excited as me to see that both of his cubs are out. Because we haven't seen both together in a bit. So that is wildly exciting. And he doesn't know the plan. But that's okay. We're not going to tell him that part. Oh, this is adorable. Look how dominant Masingita is acting as well. Just have a look at this body behavior, this body language. Immediately coming up, tail up, making noises, running straight into the middle of the hyena storm. That is very dominant behavior. Mbilo is also uh, showing some very dominant behavior. But if you compare that, and Kira and Loki, very, very different. Very different. Okay, we're going to send you over to Trishala to see what she's found in Amakala. I know she must miss these hyena cubs and will be very excited to know the June bugs are here. Oh, it sounds like Juma is being very successful with the bingo. Me, on the other hand, I've been sidetracked by the sec secretary bird that's not on my list. Um, and there's the bucking impala etc yellow mongoose all pulled me aside but that's okay because the bingo pushes you on but there's so many other sightings to find in between now this secretary bird is really far, far from where we normally see them and it's been trying to take off but there's it's so so windy and it did this little run up and opened its wings Oh, it looked like an airplane there. It went down and then it turned around. Are you going to... There we go, there we go, there we go. <laughs> you can do it. You want me to turn, BK? <laughs> that was very, very cool. At least this time it managed to get off the ground. <laughs> and we've got a whole lot of antelope in front of us as well also none of which are on my board but we're gonna spend some time here anyway so these pied crows have also been being um been mobbing the secretary bird which is quite interesting all right let's reposition here hopefully get a nice view have you heard world animal day is on its way and with it a very exciting game of animal bingo Join in on the fun with your very own Animal Bingo shirt. And who knows, perhaps wearing one of these lucky shirts in support of your favorite naturalist could help them win. Find this and more in the Wild Earth Shop today.
Right, it is far, but can you see what that is? And there's two of them. Very long neck. There's markings, there's distinct markings, long legs. I know it is, it is a giraffe, for sure. But I need you to confirm that I have indeed seen a giraffe. I'm sure we'll get confirmation. There's nothing you can confuse that with. So where are we going to put this? We've got two giraffe spots here. Two giraffes. No, but it's one sighting counts as one star. So, right. So if we look at my board, it makes more sense to put it down here because I've got a better chance to find buffalo weaver and yellow billed stalks to maybe get a three there than southern ground hornbills and the chameleon. So that one won't work. I'm going to put it on this one. All right. Now we need to get those buffaloes. I think probably our best bet is to go around HQ, that area there. Water hole. Those buffaloes were heading there this morning. Always a good plan. We should get an impala on the way. And remember, not only do you need to confirm our sightings for this bingo, but you can also just send us questions. Send me questions, comments, anything. It's your safari. You are live with me on this safari, and I will be happy, and I would love to answer and mention the comments that you sent to me. Okay. I think our giraffes are distant. We'll probably try and let's see impala and buffalo is my biggest one now. Right, uh, so there's a question from Kevin, but I just been struggling to to get that. I think I was talking at the time. I'm sure I'll get the question being fed again just now. What is that? What's sitting in front? Is it starlings? Oh no, it's wood hoopoos. Hi there, Kevin wants to know if it's possible for a giraffe to lose its ossicones during a fight. Uh, it is certainly possible they won't necessarily lose them but they can break its bone it's a bone just like any other bone in the body uh, that protrudes from the skull it's actually a protrusion of the skull but it is bone and i have seen giraffe with broken ossicones but they're still covered in skin so the inside is broken you can see it's quite floppy it's not common uh, they are designed to withstand severe punishment um, so it's not a very common thing I, I, but I have seen it before I mean it is essentially a bone but it will take substantial force to actually break them so therefore it's not common at all Right, we're going to now search for our buffalo to hopefully get us to four in a row and an impala. We need an impala as well. Right, so let's go to Tess to see if she's managed to add more animals to her border. Right now. <laughs> okay, we've got my ribs. I'm sure you knew that though. <laughs> May have been a partly sneaky maneuver on my part, but it's a competition. You gotta do what you gotta do to win. <laughs> Please do confirm my ribs for me when you have time. <laughs> but how beautiful is he? I'm so excited that we're getting to see him. 
I have not seen my ribs in oof, probably close to a month. I think the last time I saw him was on Chitwa, somewhere close to the dam. I have a feeling. But I've seen Langa more than I've seen Maribs recently. And like Cedric was saying, Maribs is probably everybody's favorite young male leopard. And it's, it's obvious why. He is an absolute beauty. Interestingly enough, he has chosen to completely ignore the fact that Swazi and two of the Juma clan cubs are currently swimming in Treehouse Dam. We can't show you because they're behind the thickets from where we are. He looked up, he listened, and he went straight back to sleep. So he is not worried at all about the fact that there are hyenas close by. But I don't suppose he really needs to be. Swazi wouldn't do anything to him. He doesn't have a kill, so the hyenas might not come here. And with the cubs around, Swazi's main idea will be, let's protect those cubs. Let's protect them. Afternoon, Dylan, go ahead. Myself and Brett both answered Dylan at the same time on the radio. That's really funny. <laughs> okay, we just have to do one quick formality in the process here. And I've decided what I'm going to do next, actually. Other than marking off my final piece of my bingo puzzle. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. There goes Cedric's hat trick right there. Do you see that pretty line of stripes? There goes Cedric's hat trick. <laughs> That's very exciting. But what I've decided to do is try and complete this one as well <coughs> excuse me so i'm going to go to chitwa and see if i can find a crocodile and a giraffe and i'm going to see if i can find elephants because if i can complete two there's absolutely no contest as to who deserves to win today sneaky i like it <laughs> bingo 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 we should have a bingo song panda we should have a bingo bingo song and dance pow, 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 pow. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> I'm very excited. My ribs is not as excited about this prospect. I think he's judging my dance moves. I think everyone would be judging my dance moves. Maybe even Brett in the vehicle behind me is judging the dance moves and the weird way that I said bingo out of nowhere. <laughs> So my ribs is kind of aiming himself towards those hyenas. Oh, look, I just noticed that alarm calling. Adam, you're 11 years old. Thank you so much for your question. No, leopards don't need to sharpen their teeth for hunting. Their teeth are naturally sharpened when they are chewing because they use something called carnassial shear. So that's their molars, their back teeth are really, really sharp. They fit together like scissors and they use that to cut through meat. But their teeth, if they break or if they dull down over time, which they do, they stay like that. They can't grow them back. They can't sharpen them. So they don't do things like hyenas and wild dogs when they chew on sticks and all sorts of things. Leopards don't do that. The only time you'll see leopards doing that is when it's a leopard cub and they are teething. They're just getting used to that itch of the mouth and they want to try and taste everything and chew everything to see what it tastes like and what it does. And whether it takes away the awful itch in the mouth from teething. So that's ultimately why leopards would chew things. They won't even really eat all the bones of a carcass because they don't need to. They don't need to digest that. That'll be up to the hyenas. So my ribs over here was born with some pretty sharp teeth. He grew some very sharp adult teeth. And so he doesn't really need to do much else to maintain them. Lovely, Mr. Maribs. Thank you for making my day and my week. For now, it sounds like Chris is also trying to complete his board and he's very close, so I'm going to send you over to Pridelands. Indeed. Uh, indeed. We are populating quickly. So that line that I'm targeting to at least get a four to be competitive uh, is taking shape. It's taking shape. All right, guys, this is an easy one. Send me confirmation. Impala. 
and then I'll quickly go back to my board I'm actually getting my sticker ready already <laughs> it's actually a whole bunch of them here Definitely Impala. Yeah, yes, last week we had so many yellow bill stalks down at Glover Dam. They there. The leopard tortoise, it's still a bit early for them to move, but sometimes you're lucky in this weather that you can find them at a dam. So late, late, as soon as the sun's almost about to go down, that might be a, a dam thing. We got the Impala there. So I need to try and find that buffalo. So just waiting for my confirmation. We have seen grey dikers, but yeah, to get those guys on. War talks. Oh, we've got another buffalo there. Vultures are opportunistic. You, they can appear without any warning. But yeah, there's my line. There. Gotta get that buffalo. Gotta get the score up. Just waiting for the confirmation on this impala. Not yet three in a row. Almost. Oh, there's three in a row. I don't know how the scoring looks. Does it have to, to be three attached to each other or three in a row? Maybe. So I have confirmation. I misunderstood the scoring. I thought it has to be right next to each other, but apparently, if it's in a, just in a row, like there, we got one, two, three. So we're on three, right? We are going to. We are going to. We're going to do this. We're going to do this today, right? Let's go get those buffaloes. Let's go get those buffaloes. Quickly, let's go over to Tessa. There's something brewing there, Juma. Okay, so my heart is in my chest right now and I think it's fallen right through my bottom end as well. At the same time, I don't know what's happening. My ribs is up and he's stalking and I'm too scared to tell you what he's stalking. Now it is a natural process of course, but Corky has just come past with Kira, Loki and Loki was, no, Koa was the last hyena cub to come through. They're standing in front of him behind those bushes and the cubs don't know that he's here. Corky could smell him but didn't see him flattened in the grass, so she walked past and she's still looking for him. And now the cubs are here as well. Look at his reaction. He's stalking. Oh my goodness. Yep, my heart definitely fell through my bottom. I don't think I have one left. So there is another vehicle in the site and you're gonna hear some people, some movement. What worries me is if he's in this position and those kind Cubs turn around and start following Corky back and he flattens himself behind that log in front of him with that tall grass. They're going to walk right past him because where that mud wallow is, can you see the mud wallow on the right there, Panda? That mud wallow. They walked in between that mud wallow and him on the way through. Right past there, on that path. Oh my goodness. I don't even want to move the vehicle at this point. Look how carefully he's watching. Oh. 
I'm really hoping that Corky decides to take another route out of here because I don't want her to come back this way. I know that I probably shouldn't be saying that, but I'm sure you all know it's very difficult not to get attached to everything out here. It's part of the reason we are here. But I don't really want to see that. Portia, the hyenas would definitely defend each other and themselves. The problem is, Corky is here with three cubs on her own. So it's going to take a split second if Maribs decides to go for one of them. It takes a split second for him to actually get close enough to get one. And the three of them are too young. They're only six, six seven months old now. Um, they're still small compared to Maribs. They would fit under his chest. So, would Corky be fast enough to come back and save the situation? I don't know. She led them up, and she's the furthest one away. So, I don't know. Long and short answer, I don't know. But I know that my heart is pounding. I'm really hoping those hyenas have disappeared further up the drainage line. The other vehicle, I think, can see the hyenas because they're in this drainage line. My ribs can definitely still hear them. is moving oh my goodness there's a Marubs is moving he's he's gonna bump into this hyena oh here come the cubs I don't know where to look everything's happening Marubs is running look there he is there I've got cubs and other hyenas coming in behind me the hyenas are gonna win look here come the cubs on their own three cubs there comes Corky at the back Marubs is turning around. He's going to bump into the cubs here. There's another hyena coming in from in front of us. There's a hyena here. Oh, he's, cl he's climbing the tree. Oh, my goodness. The hyenas are winning. Go, Juma Clan. Go, Juma Clan. Oh, he's been treed. The hyena cubs are gone. They've run away. The adults are coming up to the tree. Look. Look. Corky and... Oh... Is it Comet? Could it be? I don't know. Oh, there he goes. He's going up the tree. He's going up the tree. Oh, more hyenas are coming. Matimba and Spirit are here. I don't know where to look. Everything's happening. Oh, listen to the hyenas. Oh, he has nowhere to go. He's in the smallest little bush willow in this whole area. Oh, this is insane. Oh, I think it's Ribbon. How the tables have turned. He doesn't know where to go. He looks like he's going to fall. Oh, that's a very small branch boy. That's already bending. Careful, my ribs. Careful. Oh, that is a balancing act like I've never seen before from him. Oh, my ribs, that whole thing is swaying. I'm all in. I could barely breathe right now, but yes, go Juma Clan. Well done. Well done for turning the tables because he was close to those cubs and he was looking like he was going to stalk them. And all of a sudden, Corky comes back. Matimba and Spirit come in as backup. And I think Ribbon might be at the base of the tree with Matimba and Spirit. Oh, careful, my ribs. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my word, look at that pose. 
This is unreal. He's watching, so Matimba and Spirit are below him, and it is ribbon with them. I've just confirmed that for myself, it is ribbon. But look how he's watching, he has no idea where to go. That's Corky, you can hear growling. She's growling for Koa, Loki, and Kira. She's calling them, making sure of where they are. Oh, careful boy. Oh, that whole bush willow branch is bending. I'm gonna hyperventilate. <sighs> well, he looks quite comfortable now. Okay, he looks fairly comfortable. While he's found a decent spot, I'm gonna ask Panda to show you Miss Ribbon. She's over here in front of me, Panda. There's Miss Ribbon, she's behind the bush. She's sniffing at the ground. My timber and spirit, one of them is under the tree, one's gone where Ribbon is going now. My ribs is actually watching the one that's on the ground. Let me see if that's my timber or if that's spirit. Oh, I need to see what ears. That is my timber. Okay, so there comes Matimba, he's coming over. So that's the one Marips is watching from up in the tree. That's Matimba, spirit's gone off to the side with Ribbon. Oh, listen to Corky. This is intense. Okay, back to Marips and then we'll show you Corky just now. Oh, he is panting and is hot up there, he's in the sun. So intense, so quickly. Listen to Corky, this is insane. Phil, they might wait for him until he gets tired. Corky. Now I've seen leopards get treed by hyenas before and they got bored of waiting and they left because he doesn't have a kill so what's the point there's no point in them waiting around all day for him to come down if he doesn't have a kill because he could stay up there theoretically all night wow let's see what my ribs does as well So Corky's just walking off the same game path, so they're already starting to move, they're in the drainage line, I can just see them. So they've gone down into the slightly greener section. I wonder if my ribs will take this gap to run. So all the hyenas have gone down. They're not far, they're about 15-20 meters away. But I wonder if he's going to take this gap once he's gathered himself and gained his breath again. Oh, this is insane. Wow, look how heavily he's panting, his tongue is out, he's watching those hyenas, look at that, he's staring at the hyenas, panting, taking a bit of a breather. Lexi, yes, that's exactly what I think Corky is doing, because she had the three cubs with her, there was a lot of commotion, and now her three cubs, or Koa, Kira and Loki, hers and Tima's cubs. Because she doesn't know where they are, she's still growling. She's still growling. So she's very likely calling the rest of the clan and I wouldn't be surprised if they come running. I really wouldn't. June is not far away. Swazi was at the den earlier. Where did Swazi go? It's just incredible. Oh, I feel like my heart rate is finally coming down now. 
And I think he's literally just building up some energy. He's watching them to see if they settle because if those hyenas start lying down in the drainage line, he can very quietly try and tiptoe to the edge of the tree and he can make a quick run for it. He could. But he needs to let them calm down first. And he needs to catch his own breath. See how he's keeping a watchful eye? He's watching Corky at the moment because she's moving and calling. So this is a bit of a different call that you've heard from Corky, that growling sound today. You're much more familiar with that sound from the den, when they're communicating with each other in a hierarchical way, but in a mother cub way as well, when they're interacting socially. When they've got a carcass, they'll do the big whooping call to advertise for space. And if they desperately need backup, they can use the whooping call as well. Okay, Corky has laid down. Let's see what my ribs does. Oh, he might take his gap now that she's laid down on the other side of the drainage line. He's checking carefully because the other hyenas all came from the direction he's looking in now. She's calling for backup and there's hyenas coming. He's going to be stuck there a while and that wind, look how that tree is moving. That is not a very thick branch. He could quite easily lose his balance if he dozes off. Look at that. There's more leopard than tree. <laughs> wow. Oh, please be careful when you move, boy. Thanks so much. Sorry, I'm just listening on the radio. So it's interesting how in that moment when he started stalking the hyena cubs, my heart started racing and I went, okay, it's nature, I know that this could happen, right? Reality speaking, we know that hyena cubs are vulnerable to leopards, lions, other hyenas. And then the tables turn and I think, oh no, be careful, my ribs. I mean, I'm, I'm batting for both teams here. That's a really hectic realization. I mean, that just shows you we really fall in love with all of these animals out here. As much as people say we shouldn't, we do. It's part of the reason we're here. We create connections, and that's exactly what you do as well. At home, you create a connection with these beautiful animals. And we've got two of our most important creatures right here. And you, just, you don't want anything to happen to any of them. You just want them to avoid each other. Okay, he looks like he is really starting to settle down <laughs> now. He's not comfortable looking at all. He looks like he's bracing himself on every point that he can to try and keep balanced in this wind. And as much as I know he's starting to relax, I am still nervous. I know everybody is nervous as well. As nervous as myself and Panda. I don't think I've ever heard myself and Panda this tense. It's so nerve-wracking just watching him balance up there because I don't want him to fall. I really don't want him to fall. If he manages to stay like that, I think he deserves an award for the most uncomfortable looking leopard in a while. He needs a meat pillow on that branch. Corky's starting to whoop. Uh. She's starting to whoop. Uh. Oh, immediate reaction from my ribs. What's going on?
is very good at holding a note. Let me give her that. Very good at holding a note. That was some very impressive calling. I don't know how she did that, but she's lying down while she was whipping. I think I must try and maybe... So we can see the hyenas and maribs. What do you think, Panda? Let's see if we can. I'm going to try and go a little bit backwards. Because then I can show you the hyenas and where they've settled and show you my ribs. Oh, would help if I did the Wendy trick, hey? There we go, there's the Wendy trick. Okay, let's try and move backwards. I'm hoping the signal holds because we're on a train. Would the Tajuna stories have learned that uh, it does have future and a past? If you follow it, you will never ever go wrong in life. It's very important because it contains, of course, the history background and the knowledge of the bush. In each and every family, they have so-called a tree or a ruler tree. We'll go there and kneel down and talk to the tree and say, Do we want success in the family. I was taught to trek by my grandfather. His name was called Jack Shitola, the first trekker in service sense, who was the first trekker to habituate leopard. Trekking is my favorite part of my guiding experience because if you don't trek, you'll never find yourself having joy on the guiding experience itself. It's one of the best tools that you need to have. I've been good on trekking because it's something that I've started when I was a young boy up to the adulthood. My tips to all your guides, we have to respect the wildlife. Yes, guys, we apologize for uh, losing a test there. But uh, I am at uh, Biffleshook Dam. I first want to say congratulations on Tess's uh, bingo. If it wasn't for my leopard. <clears throat> but uh, yes, definitely I'm happy that she got her line filled there and uh, good interaction there with some hyenas. I would have definitely enjoyed sitting a little bit longer there with my rips. But, you know, as a sportsman I am, I definitely wanted to share that sighting with her. But yes, as you can see at Buffalo Dam, we have got uh, in the background uh, what was quite interesting. We've got a blacksmith lapwing, and we saw two little chicks running with that blacksmith lapwing. Not the Egyptian geese on the right, but the blacksmith lapwing that's right at the back of that fallen over tree that's sitting, standing on the sand there, as you can see, preening itself there. But it's very difficult. But the little chicks are so small. They, oh, there's a little one. It's moving in front of it. You can see the little chick. It's so cute. Little fur balls. How oh, cute. Oh, that is absolutely amazing thing, seeing these little ones around. Just the two, we just we only spotted two of those little chicks. Definitely not old. I think uh, what Gert was saying, Tristan and, um, and Gert were here not long ago with uh, the slapping on a nest, on the eggs. So I'm sure they must have hatched in the last couple of days. But as well, we've got the hippo. So you're talking still about the boards. I definitely still want to fill one of my lines up here on the board. I am still very competitive. I still want to see if I can complete as much as possible around here on our animal bingo board. So we do have a hippo that is uh, relaxing in the water, water hole here. And uh, it looks like a female. You can see the pink around the eyes. And uh, definitely not a male. Male is much darker, much um, more of a darker color around the eyes. Doesn't have that pink uh, shading. But yes, definitely just uh, enjoying Bifflesook Dam for the time being. I wonder if it's not the same female that ended up there at uh, Treehouse Dam with uh, that hippo the other day. Very possible. Very possible. But yeah, let's take a look at the bingo board. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to just move my gear shift there. But the hippo here now. Well, and I, unfortunately, well, I thought we were going to get a saddleball stalker and then a Nyala was going to be the last one. But unfortunately, the saddleball was not here. I'll, I'll try Gurry Dam. I'll try maybe towards uh, uh, Bobab Dam. There is lines that side as well. But yes, so while we are going to continue with our drive, let's head over to Tess as she's still sitting with Marips. This is just crazy. Thanks so much, Cedric. Yes, it is your leg. I think my sighting wins. 
man is justified over there. But I'm still going to keep filling in my bingo board as well. From here to Chitwood Dam just now, don't forget. So I'm going to try and do a column and a road just to, you know, seal the deal properly, make sure it's no competition. <laughs> But my ribs has turned around, as I'm sure you can see. I tried to move earlier to show you the hyenas, and unfortunately, bush living, these things happen. The drainage line got the better of me with its gremlins. But that's okay, I got away from the gremlins. I'm back. I'm here with my ribs. He is walking. And he looks like he's getting ready to make a move because Corky is temporarily dozed off, as have the other hyenas. And he looks like he is looking for a gap to make a very quick escape. <clears throat> so he is still panting heavily. He is hot, hot, hot up there. There is no escaping the sun. Have a look at that. This side of him is in the shade, but the other side of him is in the full sun. No escaping the heat up there. Now, I don't think he'd be brave enough to come down and have a drink at Treehouse Dam on his way out past the hyenas. I think he's going to get down and he's going to go to the door to Twin Dams. But we. Give it a few more minutes to see what he decides to do. And then we'll go from there. He's now focused on my timber spirit and rib. He is very intensely staring at them. Oh, what a beautiful boy and what an epic heart racing sighting. I will never forget this day. <laughs> All right, I'm going to send you over to Chris with his buffalo to see what they're up to. Yes, right on, guys. Look at this impressive buffalo bull. Oh, there comes the stair. There comes the stair. Look at that. It's like you owe me money. How awesome is that? Not only is this a buffalo bull, it's also... A potential number four for me and we'll reposition just now for them so I've got a plan now while you confirm you see I've got a I got a definite four so that's a safe I'm unlikely to see a leopard tortoise but if I put it here then I'll have to get a warthog and a pill spot which is more unlikely and it will still give me a three, which I already have. So if we can get confirmation, Odin and I sort of convened about our strategy and we'll rather try the four there, which will, then we'll need to figure out a way to, to get that leopard tortoise. And the buffalo is confirmed, guys. Yes, we've got four, finally. Four in a row. Four in a row. Four in a row. Right. I am overjoyed.
So I reckon that uh, Oh, we've got a couple of twos here. There's another three, but I mean, four is the score. Four is the score. If we can wing it a little bit, and yeah, not sure how we can do that leopard tortoise. I do sometimes see them coming to drink late, late just before sunset. Sometimes you're lucky. I think I'm happy. Even if I can't get a fiver, I'm happy with a four. It's my highest score yet. Delighted, to say the least. I was very tempted to do it there because I think we can do a water kind of pull spotted owl. The difficulty with pull spotted owl is you see them, you frame up and they fly. Like most birds. So that's why I've opted to go for the the certain fall. Mm. Alright. I, I think a good place to look for a leopard tortoise. Ah, oh, they're not going to be active, man. Anyway, I'm happy with the four. Alrighty, nice Chris. Four on the board for, for the boys. Come on. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping Chris gets a, a full row here soon, soon. So I think the clapping might have been a bit loud in the mic. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, let's see what happens there with Chris. Get that fifth one. Mm, that's my elephant. All right, I'm still going, uh, still going west along Buffalo Cutline. I think what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to try and head over to uh, Bobab Dam. See if anything uh, has changed with those uh, lions that were, or that lioness that we saw this morning around that side. And uh, it'll be nice to see. Oh, yeah, we've got some elephants. Ah, elephantes on the, on the road. I thought I smelled them somewhere. Okay, there's some elephants in front, but uh, we'll get there just now. All right, I'm just gonna hema here quickly. Um, hema. Hema means stop, stand still, kind of thing. And then we're gonna see if we can get those. Uh, it looks like a female and a calf. It's on Biffles' cut line in the distance. Let's see if that is gonna be a confirmation for us, so I can mark that down on my board. Bang! Yep, going straight north into Biffles' hook. I'll take that one. I'm still waiting for confirmation. Can I mark it there, uh, FC, Gwen? Can I mark it? Is it confirmed? Okay. Thank you, thank you. All right, so there we go. I am going to mark it there. So I've got dwarf mongoose, elephant impala. So I need a giraffe and a crested barber to fill that line. I need a honey badger and termite mound. Or termite, I wouldn't say mound, but anyway, to fill that one. Well, then I've got a termite mounds, man, even termite mounds, yeah. Boom. Mm. <laughs> wow. What an intense sighting there, Juma. I was getting all the updates and I really wish I could see what was happening too. I'm sure I'm sure all of you felt that intensity. Maribs. Ah. I'm glad that he's safe and he is in that tree. We have been sitting here with I'm also glad that Tahina Cubs are safe, by the way. But we are sitting here with some black wildebeest and some eland. There were some blessbok as well, but they, like our impala, sprinted off into the distance. 
crazy sprinting into the distance. There were just three of them following each other, smelling each other, then boom, they were gone. But this tells you that this is a good spot for herbivores to be congregating. The wind has settled down for a few seconds right now. Before this, it was crazy. And like we spoke about, or like we spoke about before when we were looking at the heart to beast and the, oh, <laughs> there come our bliss book. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they'll come in now. They're just on the side that doesn't look very pretty, but they'll come in in a moment. So as we spoke about earlier with our herbivores, great to stick together, especially in these windy conditions. Windy conditions are terrible for herbivores, but they're great for predators. Predators can make sure that they they use their wind the wind to their advantage when they stalk the animals here. Now, luckily here at Amakala, I guess luckily for these herbivores, there aren't too many predators, particularly not predators that are going to take down the elant. Um, as for the wildebeest, there are lions about. There are rumors of leopard. But uh, I'm, I'm yet to be convinced. So the wildebeest would be a great meal for, for lions. I mean the eland too. These are not particularly large eland. But I want to focus in on the black wildebeest. Just because they're on my board. Although I must say I'm doing very, very poorly this bingo round. But it's okay because we've actually been seeing some really nice things while we've been out here. So as you can see, the black wildebeest look um, sort of sort of as if the they this is what a wildebeest originally looked like, and then they ran into a brick wall, and then you got a blue wildebeest because the blue wildebeest has a longer, flatter uh, snout area and for forehead. And then the horns of the black wildebeest, you can see, point forward and up. As opposed to a blue wildebeest, which is on the side and up. But the same shape. So that's what I mean, that's what I mean by it looks as if they... Blue wildebeest crashed into a wall. Or black wildebeest crashed into a wall and created a blue wildebeest. Uh, yes, there we go. I got it out of my mouth. Now one of my favorite things about a black wildebeest is that they have this gorgeous mane that's sort of erect on on their neck kind of reminds me a little bit of a zebra and then also this wonderful tail that's all horse-like and white tipped so very very easy to recognize a black wildebeest you will not confuse it with anything white tipped tail horns that move forward and then curve up so not off the side of the head like most um, antelope or bovids in this case and that mane. They also have a tuft of hair near there, or just above their nose, sort of on that slope going down from their forehead down their nose or down their snout. They have a little tuft of hair that makes it look like there's, it looks bulbous almost, but it's just a tuft of, of hair. They're brand new for me. I've never seen a black wildebeest before. Well, I mean, before Amakala. Um, this is not my first time seeing it right now. But I find them really, really interesting looking. Again, just like blue wildebeest, they're grazers. So they're really enjoying the grass here. Oh, Faye, that's an interesting question. You'd like to know which antelopes have the most conflict with each other. So generally speaking, antelope don't really... Oh, look, this elant is, is, is trying to eat on top of this black wildebeest. Well, there's a conflict right there. <laughs> so within uh, or between species, there's not really conflict because herbivores have a great way of... Even though they, they have similar needs in terms of resources, they're able to divide it very, very specially. So, for example, 
zebras might have taller, eat taller grass, while the wildebeest will come through and eat shorter grass. So they really, really know how to divide up their resources so that everyone doesn't really have to be in competition. And then the browsers, you'll see giraffes are browsing at the top, kudu are browsing below, um, bushbuck below that. So they they really know how to how to kind of layer those niches so that they're not they're not really in competition with each other so different species not don't really have conflict but within species which would be the most aggressive to each other i would say males let's narrow it down males within any of the antelope species because they're constantly in competition for mates and territory. You'll see them fighting quite a bit. But I'd say that impala males, when during the rut, uh, can be quite violent. Um, so I'm going to say impala for now, but we'll, we'll think about it. And there comes the blessbok walking through. Yes, also remember to let anybody or whoever know um, that there is a black wildebeest, a blessed book, and an eland here because they're on my board. Now let me send you over to Cedric. I'm sure he has something that's on his board too. Yes, I've got found another herd of elephants and uh, it looks like another female with another a youngster around here. So I think uh, Definitely, it's going to be fantastic to see if we can mark uh, these ones down. As you can see, I've got another elephant on my board. Somewhere there. there. <laughs> so I'm going to, we're going to do a confirmation on that one. There's the elephant there. So let's see if we can put that one down. Okay. It looks like a nice female, nice herd. And oh, there's my head. And looks like they are heading north in towards uh, Biffle's Hook area. And I think they might disappear very soon. And while they do that, I think maybe sooner or later I will head towards a Baobab Dam. But if you, yes, uh, as you know, we are live and this is an interactive experience. So if you want to, please send in your questions or if you want to chat to us about something. Or even want to see some different species just to let us know as you know this is your safari and here in this amazing African wilderness of ours all right I think let's head towards Baobab Dam all right so I'm glad my elephants have been confirmed so I think it's going to be wonderful to head over to Baobab Dam to look for some lions.
I have another one for my bingo board. Ooh, I'm so excited. A mother and calf white rhino that are slowly moving into the thickets with some zebras in the background. Can you get any better? And wait for it. Wait for it. Guess what? Big Daddy's coming over. Oh, here he comes. He is massive. Hello, big boy. Ha! This is another one for my bingo board. As soon as you've confirmed this, please do let me know. I am adamant I'm going to get two or three bingos today, not just one. I will not give up. But how special to be able to show you some beautiful white rhinos. Late afternoon, the sun is setting. It's nice and cool. Moving around, having the best time. Grazing away very happily. So while we are looking at them, and since we are here playing bingo, and I've got another one on my board, hopefully, it is a good time to remind you that we are going to be doing a really cool thing tomorrow. So this week, we're kind of celebrating all the animals, big and small, but tomorrow night, we're hosting an AMA, an Ask Me Anything, on World Animal Day. So the Tuesday, the 4th of October, tomorrow, we're going to have an Ask Me Anything but it's going to have a bit of a difference. Along with myself and Cedric here in Juma, we're going to have Lauren, Trishala and Chris joining us from Madikwe, Amakala and Pridelands. You can ask us anything at all, so don't forget to send in any and all of your animal related questions. You can join us for this. It's not to be missed. It is going to be absolutely incredible. Tomorrow, Tuesday, the 4th of October, 7.40pm Central African time for Explorers Only. Come and join us. Okay, it is confirmed we're in a bit of a tough spot, so I'm going to put it on, but I'm going to show you where it is a little bit later on in the drive. Thank you for confirming it, everybody. I do not want to have too much movement around these rhinos, but I'm really happy that I got to show you. into those thickets. I can't believe we've had rhinos twice in one day. So special. Okay, it sounds like Lauren is ready to say hello in Madikwe, so let's not wait any longer. Let's send you there. Wow, that took a long time, everyone. But yes, you're finally with us here at Madikwe Game Reserve. Sadly, our stunning surprise for you has now put his head down. It was up for a very long time as he is sleeping or dosing, as they like to call it, under this gorgeous shepherd tree. We are late, but we are here. Good afternoon. My name is Lauren and I do have a Davi on camera. I'm wearing my bingo t-shirt to celebrate my colleagues, but we, of course, well, we will not be participating in the bingo, I'm afraid, because, well, we have our star of the show right here. I feel like I've won the bingo by putting on this male lion. Look at it, under the Actually, it's not a very big shepherd's tree at all. It's a very small shepherd's tree. First lion that we have put on at Madikwe. And he is definitely a big boy with an even bigger tummy. So this is very exciting for us. So I feel like I've won Madikwe's bingo here. And I will just join in the camaraderie of all my colleagues. Oh, there we go, guys. Take a look. <laughs> Tommy's having a wee chuckle back there. You okay, Tommy? I think he's very happy that we've got a gorgeous, magnificent male on the screen. You live, my friend? Now, the Medikwe team have taken... I think we're on week two. And we've just taken time to really get to know the property. And explore and learn. There's no point in jumping in and racing around all the big five sightings and racing from sighting to sighting. It's all about learning and exploring, learning the lay of the land. And Lara, yes, oh my word. In the words of Steve Falconbridge, this is a big boy, absolutely stunning. 
And he has been here all day, apparently. And we are late today because of load shedding, everyone. I just want to explain that because it's very, very tricky for us. All we want to do is be out with you. But sadly, there is something in South Africa called load shedding. It's very difficult for me to explain because I don't entirely understand it. But it does mean they just cut off your electricity and your water, in the case of Madikwe, for two and a half hours. Which means the towers go down and we can sadly not broadcast. But, you know, when we can, we will always be out and about. And it is 25 to 6, so I'm hoping that it's starting to cool down. Oh, it doesn't really feel like it, to be honest. And this boy gets up. He might even call. But it reached 38 degrees today. 38 degrees. <laughs> My goodness. Yes, I know, I feel you. And it's hard to compare because you always look back with rose tinted glasses, but I do feel the heat here is really extraordinary. There's something different about it in comparison to the low felt. It's very dry here, it's very, very arid. I feel like it's a little bit more humid in the low felt. I don't know if that's the best way to explain it. But the temperatures just soar through the roof here at Medikwe. But as soon as the first rains come, this landscape is going to completely transform. <laughs> James, I know. This is his first time on camera, properly. I'm sure many people have taken photos of this gorgeous boy. Yes, we're talking about you. Okay. Uh-huh. But this is his first time being live. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. Thank you, Dovey. Please forgive me. Oh, my goodness, he's a beast. I just wonder how tall he's going to be. I wonder if Trishala is yet to meet that male lion of Amakala yet. Just imagine to be in the umwelt of a lion. That feeling of being covered in that hair, it's excessive, it really is. Handicap principle, it's too much for this heat. But yet, that's the essence of being a male lion. Not only do you have an extremely full tummy, I mean, um, that is very full, my boy. I don't know what you have had. You're covered in hair. And in Medikwe, there is hardly any shade. I mean, the shade is very minimal that he's lying in anyway. It's a very small shepherd's tree. Imagine that. Our sightings have been nothing short of incredible at Medikwe. I... Some of the sightings we've had so far have just absolutely blown me away. This landscape, together with the intensity of the sightings, is just unreal. The high density of predators all in one area. There's a very relaxed leopard as well, a male leopard, so we'll get round to him. Jackie, Maine is very strongly linked to age. And I don't know how old this boy is. And we haven't seen him properly stand up because what's fascinating is when a male lion stands up, you can really see how far down the 
main goals. As they get older towards sort of their prime, if you like, you will see that the mane starts to go all the way down their chest, right in the middle of their sort of two front legs. And it also goes all the way down their back. And they start to get really hairy elbows, which doesn't sound so pleasant, but it's a stage, if you like. So normally when they're in their prime, between five to six, seven years, that's when the mane is at its fullest. And that's when you're going to see it the darkest, right down the chest, even in the sort of armpit area. I know it's not officially an armpit, but you get what I'm talking about. So I really need this boy to stand up to really gauge him. But otherwise, five to seven on average is when the male, the mane is at its fullest and healthiest and darkest that it's ever going to be. After that, it does start to just wear out ever so slightly because they become a bit more of an older male. And prior to that, around three to four years old, that's the sort of mohawk stage where they just look ridiculously awkward. This one does not look awkward, that's for sure. So I'm absolutely over the moon, everyone, that we managed to get our first lion for you on camera at Medikwe. Oh, call has dropped. Tra -la 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 -la. What? <laughs> Sorry, my comms are not being good. That's that's why I said I was seeing the call. The call has dropped. Um, but there you go. Live entertainment plus animals plus a great view. Aren't you all so lucky? I wish that that was on my bingo board though. Was it nice that BK sung back to me? That was very sweet. BK. <laughs> okay, we are looking at the. The landscape here at Amakala. We've just gotten up onto a different section, not onto the ridge, but just in another kind of hilly area. Because when we go down the other side, then we're going to get some, hopefully, some impala so I can improve my score by the end of the day. You can see it's really open around here, and the higher we get up, um, the more likely we are to come across some fainboss type vegetation. And I also really enjoy being quite high because birds sort of fly at your eye level. I think that's really, really cool. You see them, even though for them, obviously, they're, you know, flying above the ground. But for us, because we're high, you get to see them in flight. And it's really, really nice. We just saw a pied, co pied crow come down and land. And I've also lost my director, so I'm going to take it from BK, whatever he says. <laughs> uh, signal has not been great to us today, but it's okay. So how about I be quiet and let you take in the scenery and hopefully the directors will do everything else. Lovely, I think. I'm back, everybody, with another animal for my board a crocodile. There it is on the bank in the grass line, which is a little weird. I wonder how quickly those eggs develop after mating, because we had them mating two days ago. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. It's so one thing I actually don't know is how fast they lay eggs once that process is done. Anyway, just to update everybody on what happened in the Marib sighting after we left. So Marib's came down the tree. He scuffled off into the drainage line below the dam wall and disappeared. So 
that is why we are here at Chitwa Dam and not with Maribs. But nobody was harmed. The hyenas carried on sleeping. Maribs made a fairly elegant descent from the tree, but unfortunately the signal gremlins got us. As it is in the bush, you know what it's like. It's, it's live in the middle of nowhere, basically. So unfortunately, sometimes these things happen. But I promise you, everybody was unharmed. Panda and I have both calmed our heart rates right back down now. And luckily, we didn't have to witness anything none of us wanted to see. Whew, big sigh of relief. So here we are adding to the animal board, but what I did want to ask you is, considering we saw Corky, Matemba Spirit and Ribbon in that sighting of Maribs, is that another confirmed hyena sighting for me? Can I add that to my board? Because that's separate from the hyena den. That was a whole separate hyena leopard interaction. Can I add that? And can I add this here crocodile? I will show you where I put my rhino. So this one here is my rhino. There it is. Hello. And I'm hoping that I can add a separate hyena sighting. Ah, apparently my words are not doing what my face is doing. I apologize. But do I get another hyena point there for the separate confirmed sighting? Is it confirmed that we had hyenas with my ribs? Can I put a sticker there? Yay! Okay, separate hyena sighting. Thank you, Gwyn, for confirming. And then, am I confirmed for a crocodilian as well? A lovely big crocodile at Chitwa Dam. I'm not sure whether it is the one or the other. We really can't see it that well. It was just the tail. But please, please tell me that it might be. Pretty please. I'll just wait. <laughs> well, I look at the board because I'm super keen. <laughs> So my goal here is if I get a lion and a genet, if I get lion and genet, I can complete two rows of bingo next to each other. Okay, crocodile has been confirmed. Put that there. And then if I can get an elephant and a giraffe, I can do that one as well. That would be three bingos. I don't know if I'll get that one because I think the giraffe might be a bit challenging and the genet is going to be challenging. But I'd like to challenge myself to find some lions. I think it's a good time of the day for lions to be out and about. I think, I think. Hopefully. But anyway, let's have another look at the crocodile very quickly to see if we can ID which one it is. It's very tough because we kind of need to see that back foot. One of them has a back foot that's a bit um, stumpy. It's, it's kind of rounded, so it's lost the toes. Oh, it was born without them, hatched without them. But it's got a, um, it, it looks like a, like a ball on the end of its leg instead of a foot. And that's usually how we tell them apart. Wow, but that is a big crocodile. I'm very impressed. It's lying nose away from us, so it's the tail end that we're seeing. But just as a reminder, because we are live, because we are interactive, we love having you on board. Please, if you have any questions, any topics you want me to discuss, anything like that, let me know. Um, if you're hoping that I find any more bingos so that I can <laughs> really well and truly beat Cedric properly today without any hint of a doubt, <laughs> let me know that as well. <laughs> Oh, what a day. I still can't believe that Narib sighting. That absolutely blew my mind. Oh. It actually feels like that whole sighting was a... At, at the same time, it was playing out in slow motion, but it feels like a blur. Hey, Panda? It's like a weird combination of both. At least this is a little bit more slow-paced. We can actually catch our breath. So last I heard, these crocodiles had two hatchlings. So, interesting that they've been mating again, but maybe there's a separate crocodile we don't know about that's come in to have a separate brood. Anyway, I think I'm going to challenge myself to find some lines and I'll send you over to Cedric to see what he's looking at. It sounds quite interesting.
Yes, I'm just uh, enjoying the last bit of uh, the sun as it's setting behind uh, the Drakensberg mountain range. As you can see, it's slowly, or not even slowly, it's going so quick, you can actually see it going down. And of course, it has been once again a fantastic day of uh, bingo. Definitely I'm reflecting on it and uh, very happy for, uh, for Tess. Yes, I am. <clears throat> I am. But it's fine, it's good, it's good, good for Tess. Yeah. Yes, um, uh, I will be celebrating for her tonight, definitely. I'll be celebrating while going to sleep very early. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Oh, well, she's going to try and get a second row. I'm going to still try and see if I can get a uh, uh, complete one or two of my other rows. Yeah. But I'm just going to take this time just to enjoy these colors. Definitely that's the time of the night or the time of the day when our leopards and lions will become more active. I want to see if I can find myself another leopard, which will be fantastic. Or else I might actually end up going back to my rips. I think uh, Tess has left him. I think she went over to Chitwa. So yes, I might go back to my find. Nate, yes, it is perfect and hat and myself says, says thank you so much for that comment. We do appreciate it. Sunset is amazing. Nice just to have the last bit and a laughing dove that just flew up into the tree there. Oh, there it goes. Bye -bye. So I think what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and head down uh, Impala Road towards Impala Plains, take a look around that side. We did have female leopard tracks coming up as Zoe's this morning. Uh, I didn't see anything crossing onto Vuyatilla Access. I think I'll try and go over towards Impala Plains, just uh, go and comb through that area and uh, see if we are lucky with uh, that female. Most probably should do it, look like quite a, a big female. And if not, then I'll try and see if I can maybe head into the direction of my Rips uh, Trials Dam. But tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon, is uh, our last uh, day of our animal bingo. And uh, I will definitely going to be meditating tomorrow morning when we get back from drive and uh, <laughs> see if I can bring the bingo zen back into my, into my aura and uh, see if I am lucky again to take a third one. But unfortunately it wasn't a hat trick, but I'm going to definitely go for the win tomorrow afternoon. Definitely. Feels like I'm. Feels like I've lost a lot today. <laughs> anyway, well we, oh, no, well we're going to head further south. And oh yeah, fantastic for Lauren with uh, that male lion in Madikwe. It is brilliant. I'm glad that she got a Madikwe male lion. But talking about that, let's head over to Madikwe with Lauren's lion. Our very sleepy lion, who I'm really, really hoping will wake up. Darby would like to give you a view of the sunset. On you go, Darby. You are welcome. <laughs> so you can see that uh, it's still, it's not really low. It's still got a little bit to go, but we're getting there. And with this gorgeous sunset, the temperatures are dropping. Oh my goodness. It's literally driving here is like driving under a hot air dryer or a hair dryer actually. Not even a hand dryer, a hair dryer. Already in the heat, 
you just put a hair dryer on your face and just make it hotter. That's what it feels like out here. Beautiful sunset, Javi. It's a lovely mountain range known as the Thirst Mountains in English. And in Afrikaans? Dwarf. Dwarfsberg. There you go. Oh, there you go. I did it. I don't know how horribly I did it, but I did it. Dwarfsberg. Thirsty Mountain. Kelly, you're saying lovely sunset. Thank you, David. Thanks, Kelly. A lot of people ask why I call Davi Davi, and it is just simply a nickname. His name is David, but my brother's name is David, and my father's name is David, and my grandfather's name is David. So trust me, I do not want to call Davi David. So we're going to opt for Davi instead. Come on, boy. I want you to get up. I want to see how magnificent you are. Zach, yes. So it is just very similar to humans. If you think about a, a baby human, an infant, they are born with fingernails. They're very, very small, almost to the point where they don't look real, but they are there. And it would be exactly the same for this lion. Even for a domestic cat, if you think about little kittens, they have got tiny little claws that can actually be extremely sharp. And as they get older, they harden, they get more keratinized, and they grow much longer. I've actually never owned a house cat because of allergies, but I'd love to. They're adorable, but it's exactly the same. So yes, they are. But of course, in order to keep them nice and protected, they are hidden generally in those protective sheaths. I really do use their claws as weapons when hunting. Thank you.
ba boom A pride of lions lies sleeping in the twilight. Three lionesses and seven cubs slowly getting active. <laughs> I have another bingo animal. I'm so excited. And we are all on our own. There is no one else here. We have the sighting to ourselves. Some sleepy lions spotted just south of Gauri, Maine. We could see them from Gauri, Maine. I'm so, so happy right now. This is better than I could have asked for. <laughs> Hello, little one. That was a very good lion flop. You're going to be just like a big lion one day. <laughs> I don't know what Panda and I did right today. Hello. Nice to see you awake and moving. Boof. An even better lion flop. That was a 10 out of 5. As far as lion flops go, that was a 10 out of 5. That was very good, very dramatic. But yes, I don't know what Panda and I drank. Like, did we have some extra coffee in our coffee? Did we have some extra energy drink in our energy drink? I don't know what we did. But we got really, really, really lucky today. And I am ecstatic. I didn't think we were going to find lions. <laughs> Maybe it's the lucky bingo shirt and the hat combined. I think it's that. I hope you're wearing yours at home too because, wow, whatever we did today, the universe is representing. Mm. Maybe we should share some of the... If we figure out what the recipe is, Panda, we're going to have to bottle it and sell it. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. It's mm -hmm. a good idea. So do let me know when you have confirmed this here sighting for me, please. I'm very excited. Yay, confirmed. Thank you, Gwen. Okay, we are ready to put another sticker on the board. Let's put it on. Just as a reminder, if you have no idea what's happening, or if you just want a reminder of the rules, let's go through them. So the aim of the game is each one of us has a different bingo board with different animals every day. So tomorrow will be different to today. Yesterday is different to today as well. And tomorrow is the grand finale. And the aim of it is to try and tick off as many of these animals as we can. So essentially we have a, a nice view of the animals. You have to confirm it for us. And we've got to try and get five in a column, five in a row or five in a diagonal. So there's only two diagonals that include the five. And then we've either got to get five across or five down. I'm going for, if I can, two down. And if I can, one across, just because I'm very competitive and I had to, I just had to. But we're having so much fun, you know, we have to keep going. So we announced the winner pretty much every day. The first two days were Cedric. He won the first two bingo animal challenges. Today it is me with this column of five. And I don't know who's going to win tomorrow, but hopefully it's not going to be Cedric. <laughs> bingo! <laughs> it's very exciting. So this animal bingo is a lot of fun for us. And it's basically just a chance for us to have a heck of a lot of fun while celebrating all the different animals. Because it's World Animal Day tomorrow. So why not have a little bit of bingo fun? Oh, lions, lions, lions. So as we see one animal, so this is a lion for me, I can only tick off lion once on my board because it needs to be challenging. So for example, I had three different hyenas on the board today. I only managed to get two so far. So I don't have the third hyena sighting yet, but I'm working on it. I'll try and get there. A ladybug, thank you. I don't know how Panda and I got so lucky, but if we figure out that recipe, I will tell you right now, we will share that because it's a great feeling. <laughs> I think I've had more fist bumps from Panda today than I have in a while. <laughs> but also, I mean, that sighting with Maroops was very different to the sighting of the lions. This is very calming. The sighting of the leopard we had was oof, very intense. Oh, hello. Rolling onto the back to expose the tummy. So as much as it's getting cooler, it is still exceptionally hot at this point in time. There's a very warm wind. It's not a cold breeze. So these lions must be shifting position quite a bit to try and stay cool. So what they do when they get up and move like that, it's because they've warmed the earth underneath them. So they move away from that and find a cold spot or colder spot. 
but also shifting from side to side when the body is in contact with the earth you start sweating on that side because it's touching the surface so you're sweating just like that lioness is doing at the top there she was sweating on her right hand side the back side facing the other way and so she's rolled onto the other side because that side was in contact with the breeze so that side is cooler then when she turns over like that this is now the sweaty side that's exposed to the breeze as that sweat evaporates it's cooling her body and then she'll repeat the process as soon as she's hot enough so it's a really cool way for lions to just try and stay cool. They are doing an excellent job at sleeping. You can see the cubs are slowly one by one moving. Oh, that's a nice full belly full of kudu. Excellent lion flop. The famous lion maneuver is the lion flop when they want to lie down and sleep. Oh, that wind is picking up a little bit. That is beautiful. I can see even with the breeze, even with the sun going down, normally insects are calming down at this stage. Watch how the ears are flicking. It's about the only movement we can see consistently is an ear flick. So the flies are still hanging around their faces. Now the flies are looking for moisture. Chad, I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a lion scratch itself against a tree to groom or to scratch an itch. So normally what they do is they lick themselves and they lick each other. It's part of the greater success of lions as a species is that social aspect of grooming each other and having a very close bond. I don't think... I have seen lions scratch their chins on trees and their necks, but I've never seen them scratch the rest of the body. But I suppose a lion on its own would have to make a plan. If it's a lion that's gone rogue and it's now kind of moving around on its own, if it needs a, a spot reached that it can't reach, then I suppose it would have to. I don't think it's particularly common though. I'm not sure if the other, if the other guides today have seen that happening a lot. I've seen, definitely seen chin scratches, but I think they enjoy the feeling and it's a combination of scent marking too, scratching the cheeks and chin. But I've never seen them do it with the body like we see zebras and elephants and warthogs doing. Because also remember when they're grooming each other with those very rough tongues, they're able to pull the pests off of each other. So things like ticks they can bite off or they can try and lick off where warthogs don't really groom each other. Zebras do groom each other, but not a lot. Hello, girl. So the hard to reach places, they can't groom each other. They're incapable. Where lions, and down she goes. Lions are a lot more flexible, so they can reach, you know, in between the legs, the back legs, and they can groom each other under the arms, the front, the front legs. So they don't really need it as much. That's an interesting question. I'd never really thought about that. Are you guys waking up? <laughs> Slowly but surely, one by one, starting to get up and move to a new spot. I think they're just going to go straight back to sleep though. For now, I am going to send you to Trishala at Amakala to see what she's got. I've heard that a double bingo is very rare, so I hope that Tess gets it. Yeah. We have the, just the cutest sighting. There's three jackals here, back, black back jackals. Um, but there's a fourth one that's further up as well. And these ones look quite young. Oh no, you can't really hear me. I'm going to try and face away from the jackals. Oh no, now I won't be able to see them, but you can see them. So there's three of them here and there's another one further up. And I think this might be a little family that we've got here. Perhaps some cubs that have grown up. Because remember they have a monogamous pair, alpha breeding pair, and then their most recent offspring.
And I think they're they're just chilling. But this is awesome. It's so so sweet, so relaxed. Normally when we see them they're jumping about going from one area to another area. So we often get to see them relaxed and stretching and maybe playing a little bit. So I think this jackal's gonna go up to the other one. Come on. Oh no, you wanna go out on the hunt, do you? Oh, look at this. Is that not absolutely stunning? There they all go. There they all go. Staring right at us. You can't get him. Oh, there was <laughs> this one that was staring right at me. These are surely young, young jackals. Do that type of curiosity. I wish I could turn around to show them to you. You're just gonna have to look at the one that's lying down there, um, because if I start up, they're going to move. Or rather get a jolt um, and that's not going to be very nice for them they keep looking towards the other one perhaps it's the parents that are left here ah Helen you'd like to know if jackal jackals and wild dogs are related oh, excuse me yes they are related but um, pretty distantly, they're obviously both canids um, and blackback jackals, uh, black jackals and side-striped jackals are closely related. Ah, oh, there's the other one moving up there. So blackback jackals, side-striped jackals are very closely rela related. And then uh, a wild dog is on a separate, separate branch. So yes, they are related, but not not very close they share a common ancestor but uh, but that's about it so amongst the canids in general that or wolf-like canids the ones that, and the ones that we get um in this area the black back jackal and the side striped jackal are the most closely related I can't remember if I... Um, I remember you reading something about the doll being close, closely related to the wild dog, but I might be talking nonsense. Um, but I will get back to you on that. So yes, they are related. They're both canids in the way that... Um, I was going to use an example, but then I realized I know that relationship too well. <laughs> but in the, in the same way as, say, uh, a cheetah and a, a lion are related, both felids. That is an oversimplified example. Just saying. Hi. My name is Debbie Dean Hartog and I come from Pretoria in South Africa and I am absolutely thrilled to have won the Wild Earth Prize to the Woodbury Tented Camp in Amakala Game Reserve. Wild Earth has changed my life as I love watching the daily game drives. Thank you, Wild Earth. Sign up today and you could be getting out there to experience it for yourself. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your name.
sadly, our boy here hasn't um, done much, actually. Not much at all, but it's still an absolute pleasure to be in his presence. You can see that sort of top part of the mane at the forehead. It looks very like a really bad hair dye. You know, when you go to the hairdressers to get blonde and it goes orange, that's what it looks like. Very orangey ginger there. But the rest of it is quite light until it gets to that chesty part where it gets very, very dark. But he still hasn't stood up yet. He's rolled roly poly and done some, you know, half turns. But no standing up. And unfortunately, we will have to leave once the sun goes down a little bit further because of lack of light. But we'll see if we can just get any sort of movement out of him. This is a big win for us today. I'm over the moon. I'm a very competitive person as well. I got quite into the bingo in the first day. I think I'm going to be one of these older ladies that enjoys the bingo. Animal bingo or any kind of bingo. Jasmine absolutely is gorgeous to look at, even in his sleep. Absolutely. It's just nice to see different lions. From the avocas that I spent all my time with in Juma, I only briefly got to know the AC male, he sort of left as he came in. That stunning male lion in Amakala, and now we're in Madikwe. And I'm sure we're are going to encounter many lions. We've seen both packs of wild dogs now, the Bates pack and the Intolotti pack. I think that's how you pronounce it. So it's all getting rather exciting. But don't forget to talk to us, everyone. We talk enough. It's your turn. Make sure you send through your comments and questions and anything else that you would like to send through to us. Little bits of information, even stories or jokes. Don't forget. Okay, we will, we have got a little bit longer left of light to hope our boy stands up, but who knows. So for my gorgeous male lion, we're going to send you over to Tess with hers. Go, babe. It's a lion-filled day. Everybody's just lying around. Ha ha, terrible joke on a Monday. <laughs> Monday jokes. So the pride has gotten up and now is clearly lying on Gauri Main. And it looks as though they kind of want to move, but they're still too lazy. So they're just half moving, repositioning, and then relaxing again for a bit. I'm wondering if maybe they're trying to hope for something on Cheetah Cutline. Maybe they'll go into Torchwood because Torchwood is that patch of grass you can see on the left. That is Torchwood property. So maybe they're going to move into Torchwood and look for some more food there. Thank you, I'm on my way. 
A slyness in front has heard something. So we had a hyena here just now. <laughs> I got very excited because I still have one more hyena to tick off on my board. It looked like it may have been Swazi, but kind of came in, hopped around and ran off again because I think one hyena against so many lions is not the best idea. But maybe that's what this lioness was hearing. You can see she's still panting quite heavily. Remember, they ate that kudu yesterday. And even though their bellies, you can see, still have food in them, it's a lot of energy required to digest red meat. So on top of the intense heat that we've had today, these lions are still having to process the heat that their digestive system is producing while trying to digest that red meat. So it really is quite a process. And you can see they're, they're looking quite exhausted. Not that lions do much for the rest of the day. We know them as the sleepy cats. But it really does make it extra challenging when you've got a full belly and it's a hot day. And today was not just hot, it was scorchingly hot. I can feel that I'm sunburned even through my hat. And with all the excitement, Panda and I only realized on the way to Chitwa that we hadn't had anything to drink. We hadn't even stopped for a, a quick princess break, nothing. We just got so excited that we completely forgot about it and then realized it snuck up on us all of a sudden. So I'm sure these lions will be going for a drink at some point during the night tonight. They must to try and help with that digestive process. I didn't actually check if there's still water in Josie Brink pan. I think there is a little puddle of water in the mud. So we are going to have some vehicles coming to join us. They're very excited that the lions are out on the road. Patrick, it's a general rule of thumb, but yes, the color of a lion's mane can show dominance. The darker lions are generally the more dominant ones. So in this particular area, the darker maned lions tend to be more dominant than the lighter maned lions. And this is a genetic thing, so it's interesting because the, the main color is the same as our hair color, it's, it's inherited. So for example, in the Kalahari, you'll find lions with completely different colored manes to the lions you find here. A lot of them have almost no mane, and the others have a very thick, thick, thick black mane. So it's really interesting to see how it changes place to place and, and pride to pride even, or bloodline to bloodline. Here, I would think, yes, the darker manes definitely show that a lion is more dominant. It can also mean that the females are more receptive, so they might choose a lion with a darker mane as opposed to one with a lighter mane. And the theory behind this is to develop a darker mane, you have to be pretty well fed, you have to be very strong, because to get to the level where you start developing dark colors in your mane means that... One, you might have a higher level of testosterone, but two, you're strong enough to survive all those other things to get to that age. So that's the theory behind why they would be more dominant, but also why lionesses would choose them as opposed to blonder males. But it's just a general rule of thumb. There's always exceptions to the rule, and it is also down to genetics. Um, but, you know, a strong bloodline is a strong bloodline that will come out on top regardless, and the females will choose that most of the time regardless. And here there's another vehicle here with us. There's somewhere behind us, Shame. I think they're gonna have to try and go <laughs> around on the other side because these lines have literally taken up the whole road. Nobody can pass here. Thou shall not pass. The lines have decided this is this is the boundary, this is the barrier. So they were looking like they were going to get very active and now they have decided, nah, we're going to nap more. Hello. Yes. So you'll see a spotlight as well. So remember other vehicles don't have infrared lights, so they are allowed to use their spotlights. And it kind of just allows them to view the lines at night too. Station on standby one for the Zingala, come in. Station standing by. 
plates and you're welcome to start making your way. I'll make space for you. Copy, thank you. Uh, Go ahead. Hello, how are you with those man? Hello, they are static on Gauri Main, just to the east of JC Brink Pan. They are heads up and occasionally moving, but for the most part, still quite static. Uh, it was Clayton, he's on standby one. I've just called him in, so I'm sure you can take a standby two. Confirm, standby two. AFM, standby two behind Clayton. Clayton has been called in, so you'll be on standby one shortly. MJ, believe it or not, these are the three Nkuhuma lionesses with the seven cubs, but the cubs have gotten so big that they look like sub adults. I'm shocked. They are huge. I mean, this is a cub, and it looks like a full grown lion, just about. <laughs> but what we are going to do, I know there are vehicles coming to join us. I have called Clayton, is, and, uh, Clayton in, as I'm sure you heard. So when he gets close, we are going to move out so that everyone can enjoy the lions before they go back to the lodge. The people, not the lions. Hopefully the lions don't go back to the lodge. <laughs> so we'll just keep listening to make sure when the other vehicles come in that we move out. So one of my favorite things about lions is when they do start waking up, the first thing they tend to do is head rub. That affection in lions is almost palpable. You, you kind of, you want to be part of it. It's so fantastic to see. So I'm hoping that if one of them gets up and moves over like this cub did, that maybe the next one will be a bit of a head rub. There's always a bit of noise that comes with it. Oh, there's a lot of moaning and a mini growl and it's amazing. I'm really hoping that that is what happens. I can hear another vehicle coming to join us. That vehicle is moving off. There will be two coming in when that one moves, and then I will move for Clayton. I love how the system works. It's so cool being being so close to all of these people, they have become family, I suppose. <laughs> Just like the Lion Pride. They are a very strong family. Look at those fluffy ears. He looks like Maribs. He literally looks just like Maribs. Maribs had his ears back at one point a day, and all you could see sticking out were these massive long hairs. <laughs> Amazing. You can make your approach, Clayton. It's just myself and one other mover here for now. Matt, Matt, you copy, Matt. Matt, you can take that one. Oh, wow. Matt, Matt. Is there going to be... No, there's not going to be head rubbing. It's going to flop down. Boof. There it goes. It's just so good. Oh, good night, lions. Matt, we'll see you soon. Okay, and I'm on a weaver's nest, so I'm going to slowly head down, or actually not down, up a weaver's nest. I did try and fill up on my ribs. We had a brief visual of him again, <clears throat> but he's in this block here somewhere, and this block is very, very thick, and uh, he was stalking a daker, so I decided to give him uh, space and let him rather hunt all by himself without any... Uh, vehicles, uh, how can I say, bothering him and giving his position away. So yes, hopefully he's successful tonight. And I'm hoping that maybe tomorrow morning we get uh, a Marips that will be in. Ooh. But 
some hyenas calling. That's in the belly. Yeah, that's of course hyena den is up here. Yeah, that sounds like in the belly. And the belly's got a very strange uh, call. Uh, like, well, anyway, there was hyenas, uh, so I thought you guys could hear there, but uh, I guess uh, I didn't go through. Um, but it's a typical the belly's got that. She's got that. She doesn't go like. She doesn't, but she's got more like a, a rattle to her, uh, her call. Very strange. Uh, it sounds like they're calling not too far from here. Anyway, so yeah, I'm hoping that we'll find uh, maybe my ribs in the, you know, with a kill in a tree tomorrow morning, which will be fantastic. Definitely would love that. And this is exactly where El Tlalamba the other day had her Daker kill. Uh, Calvin, the hardest animal to track. Oh, Cal, that's a, it's a tough one. It depends on you're talking like the big five. I mean, they can be tracking something like uh, a scrub hare or a dwarf mongoose or a white-tailed mongoose. Things like that is difficult. I mean, nocturnal. Thanks, Grant. Uh, the comms is coming through very poorly. Um, nocturnal animal will be, well, still, I think maybe... Yes, we have serval, um, a serval cat, maybe a genet, those are quite tough. Well, the genet leaves quite a scent, like a, a scent exactly the same as uh, a leopard, typical of popcorn. Um, but yeah, it does get quite tough to track at night time, even a leopard and lion. I mean, it's uh, you don't have the, that sun, so that's why many times if I'm tracking at night time, I will throw the light down low to see if I can cast a shadow on a track if I think there is uh, potential tracks on the road. Alright, so you did go into this side. I want to go past you slowly. It's a little, uh, little night jars. Looks like little fiery neck night jars. It's, it's like little birds that actually uh, they sit on the road in a very wide mouth with little whiskers and they actually kind of catch insects at night time. So that's the thing. Uh, that's actually... Alright. No, Jennifer, I think the predators call in the evening to mainly um, announce their presence in that area against the same species. So if it's a leopard calling, like sawing, it's telling other leopards, I'm here, it's my territory. If it's lions that's roaring, it's telling uh, other lions that uh, this is their territory, this is, you know, it's been occupied. So it's mainly that. If it's contact calling, it's contact calling between family members. But I don't think, uh, look, yeah, your, prey, your prey species definitely, I mean, if I'm a impala and I'm standing here at a treehouse dam and I hear uh, lions walking on this road and start calling, mm. Hmm, I'm not going to stand there at Treehouse Dam and just like, okay, well, I'm going to wait for them. No, I'm going to, of course, I'm going to uh, get out of that area. But, uh, no, definitely I can't see anything this side. Uh, I want to see if I can get across the dam here. Let's see if we can rather go this side here. Uh, I think... get across the dam now. All right, let's go this way. Let's go one more time and then I'm going to go up Shabamu and take a look on Shabamu. Ah, there's a beetle that's it. There was a beetle that crawled in my pants. <laughs> Went right to the back here. Yo. And like those, uh, those, sharp, those uh, the legs of those beetles are so sharp and prickly as those uh, chafer uh, uh, beetles and uh, yeah oh, no, that was not a pleasant uh, feeling that all right 
<laughs> All right, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to head slowly back north from this side. I don't think there's much, too much else around here now, unless we bump into my ribs coming out here for some other reason. But other than that, Lover. I think, uh, well, if it's nighttime, nocturnal animals, or definitely maybe a be a chameleon. I've got a chameleon on my board, so I am going to be looking out for any uh, chameleons to see if we can tick that off. So, they're the nocturnal animals, and what have I got? I've got a honey badger as well. So, chameleon and honey badger that would be fantastic. If I can get one of those two, <laughs> I'll definitely be very excited very happy i'm almost should be completing a line there but a honey badger chameleon more so but i don't think a honey badger is going to be a tough one tough 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 one But yes, it's been once again an awesome day of uh, bingo it's always been great it's always uh, it's a lot of fun just getting out here and to see what we can uh, tick off and see if we can get a line like uh, not a lion like a lion but uh, a line of five animals and then it's nice to shout that word bingo so yeah, once again well done Tess Right, if you've got any questions and comments, as you know, we are live and this is an interactive experience. So if you've got any questions and comments and suggestions or stories, please send them through as uh, this is uh, your safari. And uh, it is always nice to have a live safari in this most amazing African wilderness of ours. It is really stunning this side. So I'm hoping we can find some more exciting things for you before the end of the drive later on. Thank you very much for those comments. Yes, uh, <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> I know for sure. It is nice giving others a chance. It's always nice to kind of bring it down to the to the wire I think I like that because that's when it's BMT moments big match temperament moments and uh, I'm hoping that tomorrow afternoon I can definitely bring my A game A plus game A plus 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 game and uh, I'll see what we can do it depends on the board as well so I am gonna look at that uh, board tonight my last board for tomorrow afternoon my last bingo board uh, I'm going to take a look exactly and I'm going to start strategizing my my route, my idea, weather-wise, wind direction, how the stars will be shining, all those weird interesting things and maybe it will help me succeed in a win for tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, as I said, I've got two brothers. So being with two brothers, it's always come com competition, especially my older brother and myself. Especially my older brother he is uh, three years older than me. And uh, when it came to sport, uh, my brother and myself uh, used to play in the back uh, garden, the, the yard at the back of the house. Uh, cricket, soccer, rugby, um, uh, tennis. We used to use the hose pipes of the uh, watering the uh, garden. We used to actually create a tennis court with uh, the hose pipes and then of course on Sundays my mom and my dad would just sit there and have a, a cup of tea and uh, my brother and myself would be like challenging each other. So it just shows you from uh, yeah, those days already we would actually um, really have a lot of competition and 
that's just part of my, you know, part of my, my nature. In my nature. Uh, if it's interesting with uh, the, the moon, the, the moon patterns. I mean, if you've got a full moon, the big problem is full moon. You'll find predators are less successful in full moons. I'm not saying it's they're not successful at all. They're just less. The percentage-wise goes down completely. Uh, why so? Because a full moon, you've got uh, a lot of light. So your diurnal animals, your impala, your wildebeest, zebra, all your day animals. They can see pretty well with full moon. They can, like, at night time, it's pretty much easy for them to pick up on uh, something approaching them. And uh, so, of course, uh, things like lions and leopards will tend to find it much more difficult to really kind of get close up to their prey, stalk them, surprise them. Because that element of surprise is all of a sudden taken away because of the moon, the shine of the moon. If there's no moon, if it's pitch dark, um, definitely you'll find that. Uh, a lot of your prey species then uh, tend to maybe move to the open clearings more so because it's, uh, you know, they, if they feel a little bit safe on those open clearings and not being too surprised by predators. But the element of darkness is uh, favoring your, your nocturnal cats like your lions and your leopards. So it does affect them. Do you know why giraffes have blue tongues? Or how many eyelids a crocodile has? Have you ever wondered how corrosive a vulture's stomach acid is? Or what the Milky Way has to do with dung beetles? There are so many fascinating wildlife facts for you to discover. What are you waiting for? Scan the QR code that appears in the corner of your screen, enter your questions, and our guides will answer you in real time on Wild Earth. Okay, we've got a little steer. No, don't run. Shame. No, see what he does? He goes flat. He like lies very flat. So there's a little steer box to the side. So I have, I have put the lights off. So we're using infrared, as you can see. <laughs> I'm 
Well, there was a stenbuck. <laughs> he bolted away so quickly from us here that I hardly even got to uh, frame him up. Anyway. <laughs> uh, almost wanted to say he was lying flat for us. He's doing something perfect for, you know, what he does with predators. He's lying flat, but yeah, clearly that one decided to run as fast as possible away from us. Yeah. Now with this light and this time of the year, of course, all these insects that's coming around now. Um, what's interesting is that uh, when I used to work at lodges and all that, and how many times during this time of the year, my tracker would be in front, and he would be, of course, uh, shining from side to side. Sorry, I just want to quickly. And uh, a lot of insects would come running out here. I don't know, they're looking at something here. Would come flying out and all that, and it would actually hit my guests at the back. And how often my guests used to—I always used to hear, hear this uh, shrills from behind me, like ah, and like you know, all of a sudden. And uh, these beetles used to, of course, like what's happening tonight. These little chafer beetles used to like fly into people's tops and that. And especially if you're not used to the African bush with all these insects that's around, and you've got like a little bit of a, I can say, a phobia on these flying insects, and then it could be a, quite a entertaining evening listening to people having a little bit of a how can I say a shrill at the back of these insects coming into their tops and that but yeah we've got some nice wildebeest here as we got here they were really focused on something as you can see we are in infrared so you can see and you can see we can view them at night time without actually using a spotlight but they're definitely looking straight east. But while we sit here with these uh, wildebeest, let's head over to Tess as she's got some elephants. It absolutely does, and this is a perfect example. We've got a whole herd of elephants around us, and Panda and I are in complete darkness. But look at this little baba. A very young elephant calf. Very calm. I don't know if it's because it's night time or what, but very, very cute. Quite brave. It's only standing a few meters from the car. It was hiding behind a bush. Oh, I can hear another elephant coming. Hello, Mum. So we've got elephants pretty much all around us, quite unexpectedly. Oh, look at those little tusks coming in. Hello. Hi, cutie. Oh, look at that, using its feet already to break off little bits of the herb layer. Adorable. This is another one on my list. <laughs> so I'll mark it off if you'd like me to once it's confirmed. <laughs> oh, cutie. So it looks like it's bouncing between feeding on the grass, these little herbs, and then occasionally indulging in some silver leaf, which is those fresh shoots you can see on the left. Those are silver the cluster leaf bushes. They're very young still. Oh, insects. <sighs> there you can see how small this elephant is. So if I was to stand next to the silver cluster leaf bush it would take me about probably just up to my chest height. So this elephant would take me up to about my waist height. Probably just above the hip. Melinda, I don't think it really hurts them when their tusks are growing because their tusks are just modified incisors. So it's modified teeth, essentially. There's the mum. <laughs> it's just modified teeth that are growing. So they probably go through the normal stages of teething. But I don't think that it really hurts them. It's probably just a bit itchy in the beginning until they break, when they break through the gum. And then it's just the same as us once we have teeth. It doesn't hurt if they get bigger. 
might just be a little bit of a strange feeling every now and then. So we're on Ingwe Alley. I don't actually know why we decided to come this way. We we're going to go towards Gari Dam and then we changed our minds at the last minute as we came upon Ingwe Alley. <laughs> I'm very happy we did because now we're being spoiled with elephants. Hey, big mom. So this also shows the heat. At night, elephants don't often have to use their ears to keep them cool. But on a night like tonight, it is essential. Jack, yes. So the elephant's trunk is an extension of the nose. So there isn't cartilage like ours all the way down to the tip. But if you look inside of the trunk, there's two distinct holes. Each one is a nostril that goes up into the nasal cavity and the sinuses and is connected to the mouth as well at the back of the soft palate. So everything is interconnected and essentially elephants just have a super long nose. That's what a trunk is. It's a very long, specialized, extended nose. Okay, I'm going to have to try and move forward here. <laughs> look at that little nose going. It's a big little nose. A little big nose. A little big nose, that's a bit of a little big nose. Try and move this a smidge forward. Ah, you're moving forward as well. That's very handy, thank you. And I won't have to move too much further forward. <laughs> so I know Cedric is talking about activity of predators relating to the moon and the stars. On a night like tonight, the moon is not out yet, but elephants are going to move through the night regardless of, of the, the phase of the moon because they simply have to eat so much that they can't afford not to move. They can't afford not to be out and about feeding, but it is easier for them if there is a full moon because they can see a bit better. But even now, I mean, with the stars, it is still light enough that with the naked eye, I can see the road in front of me and I can see the shapes of the elephants. Oh my goodness, tiny baby. Where did that pop out from? That was not there earlier. <sighs> it's a magic elephant and she's suckling. Or trying to anyway, not very successfully. Try again, little one. So kind of, it looks like it. Yes, it was successful. You could actually see milk on the nipple there. It was successful. That's so cute. Good job, little one. So you'll see it positions the trunk upwards to get it out of the way. Oh, mom, I'm trying to suckle you. <laughs> Not much opportunity, clearly. Mom is too busy walking away. Oh, there we go. So at this age, this little thing is hardly eating any vegetation. It's mostly milk. But it will put its trunk into mom's mouth to smell what she's eating, try and take some food out, to learn what it should be eating. <sighs> that is amazing. That is maybe a month old, if that. I think it's a bit less than a month old, that one. Tiny little thing. You see how mom's pausing every now and then to at least allow the calf a little bit of time to suckle? So it's not ideal when mom's walking, but at least she's, she's kind of calm. Oh, Kim, I actually don't know an exact amount of how many liters of milk this little one would drink in a day. I would imagine, though, it is a lot. I will definitely have a look for you, though, and find out exactly how many liters need to be drunk in a day. It is a lot because elephants are so vulnerable to dehydration if they don't have enough fluid. Elephants have to drink every day. So a little calf like that, that's combination growing and needing it to prevent dehydration, it's going to be a lot. 
I actually wouldn't even know how you would test that. I mean, obviously, if you had a hand-raised elephant calf, you would know how much it's asking for milk, but that also, I mean, they're very intelligent. They could train you to feed them as much as they want you to, I'm sure. But how would you test that with a wild elephant? Because how, you don't know how much that calf is suckling with every suck, how many milli milliliters are coming out. I don't know. Interesting. Oh, sorry, there's my hat, in case you wanted to see it. <laughs> but they are moving off, so we are going to move as well. I only keep my left light on, not the right one, because I know mom moved off to the right. Oh, they're still in the road. suckling already little one that didn't last long so it looks like it's starting to experiment with the trunk it's starting to experiment with some of the different vegetation <laughs> not very well versed at this trunk thing yet it does look like a lot of fun but I mean, I would never be able to do that with my nose, so hats off to an elephant regardless, <laughs> especially a baby one. Oh, that's clever. Get it into your mouth and bite it off. That's a much better idea. Oh, it got it there. That was awesome. We just experienced the learning moment. So mom's got some pretty decent tusks. I didn't even notice that before. So, so excited about the baby. Pretty decent tusks for a female. And there she moves off the road. Now we might be able to safely bypass without scaring the bubba. It's so cool. Oh, thank you, Mom. That was a very special moment to share. I always feel so honored when a massive animal like an elephant tolerates me in its presence for so long, especially having a little calf with it. Isn't that so special? It's little moments that make you realize how lucky we are to be out here. We really, really are. Wow. Okay. Now let's find a genet. Yes, I have found my little chameleon, a little flapped neck chameleon. As you can see, it's got that beautiful flap on the back of its neck, or the back of its head. And that's where the name comes from, flap. Neck chameleon. The little one, very small. I think it's about the size of my thumb. So it's a little youngster. And this is when they start uh, hatching. So looking at around about 250, I think it's about two, between 250 and 260 to 270 days that they will be underground. And of course, and then at this time of the year, they'll start hatching and they'll kind of come to the top and then they'll go and sit on these little branches like this little one is doing holding on for dear life while the wind is blowing him around there. <coughs> so this is definitely one of the ones on my board, on my animal bingo board. Boom, boom, boom. So yes, yeah, I know. It's been a very slow day for me on my board. Well, it's been a good, it, well, it, had a, it was a good start. <coughs> Unfortunately, I started off with a sprint and uh, yeah, it's, uh, enjoy this little one. See the things. His little tail. You can see how it's curled up. 
and he's fast asleep. They will rest during the night time, and of course during the daytime, they will move around and try and look for some insects to feed on. And there's so many insects around at the moment. All right, chameleon is confirmed. Let's uh, put it on the board. I put my glasses back on again. I think I'm uh, feeling the, the bingo vibe. Yeah, and I'm trying to see if I can complete something. I've got so many, so many lines here tonight that uh, I'm gonna need two here. I need, need two there. I need two there. I need two there. Yo, I need two, 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 two. Hmm. Oh well, what's his, what else is it before night time? Honey badger? See, I thought about a honey badger, yeah. But then a termite. Well, then I'll have to go look for a termite. A termite? Yeah, not at this time of the night, but... Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll still take a look around here, but it was nice just to see uh, this little, little flapped and neck chameleon. Of course, still, as you can see, very small. It's a, a very, very young one. And it's just uh, chillaxing on that uh, branch. And it's still quite warm, and I mean, days like this now, where it's been so hot, it's ideal for them. Of course, the temperature, body, body temperature kind of rises during the daytime, and gives them a little bit more mobility, and they become definitely more active when it's much hotter and in the summertime. And there's a lot of insects around, as I say, that's the main thing that these chameleons do feed on. Very long tongues, the tongue is practically almost the length of their body. And uh, when I shoot that sticky tongue out, I'll grab any kind of insect. Let it be grasshoppers, crickets, beetles, flies, moths, praying mantis. No, there's so many different insects that they will feed on. As long as it can fit in their mouth, they are very happy. As you can see, is looks like he is sleeping. I'm going to try and look at his eyes. Hmm. His eye is open there. Uh, Russell, that's correct. So you'll find that this chameleon at this point of time is very much like a green, a lime green color. Um, so we're just blending at night time with the leaves around. And even during the daytime, if he's coming off and he's like still green, sometimes he'll walk on sand. They'll almost go into a very, very lime, 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 lime green color, like a very light lime green color, uh, which uh, kind of almost blends in with the sand as well. And then they can also get into kind of a little natural uh, colors, get to like a brown color if they're on a brown stick, try and blend in. So the main thing is all to do with his defense. So of course, uh, there's so many kind of, kinds of predators that will feed off these chameleons from even the lilac breasted rollers, um, the magpie shrikes, your uh, gray headed shrikes, your orange breasted shrikes. A lot of shrikes will feed off uh, chameleons. And then snakes. So they, yeah, they got so many different kind of predators. So they need to make sure that they can blend in with the surrounding, and hoping that uh, none of those things will see them, especially being this small. I mean, I think uh, the survival rate of a little chameleon once it hatches is—I <laughs> don't think it's big. I think maybe it's a very small amount, maybe like a five, ten percent. And uh, send them by one. Uh, do you have two months on that bellet? The standby one. And I'm just taking a look, and you can see I wrapped so that uh, curly tail around that uh, branch. And uh, just to make sure, if in case if it's a big wind that comes through, it is definitely well uh, secured. On that uh, branch. Uh, standing by, yes, uh, go Tess. Okay, well, I'm getting uh, a song of silence. Uh, hey. <laughs> I'm just listening out. Uh, John, they'll lay, they'll actually bury the eggs under like a, a thicket, like a nice thick bush. They'll actually go and uh, dig a nice little hole where the female will go and lay her eggs in that hole. So sometimes they'll, they say it's around about 15 to 20 centimeters deep, um, the hole that the chameleon will actually dig to lay the eggs. So it's a, it's a nice fair way down. 
and um, I'm sure that's a nicely protected if you think about that. That's why you'll find even, that's a big thing, if you always see honey badgers and all that like digging up and even your uh, genets, sometimes they're digging these holes around the bases of trees and that. Sometimes you'll find that they're actually looking for uh, eggs of chameleons because they can actually pick up on the scent of those uh, eggs or the chameleon that's buried the eggs there and uh, very high in protein those eggs. So yeah, that's just, uh, unfortunately another way that can devastate the entire uh, clutch of eggs. <coughs> Alrighty then, uh, let's uh, head on. Let's see what else we can go and find. Bye bye, chameleon. Bye bye. Oh yeah. All right, I'm still heading up on uh, Black Monkey Orange Road, and. Uh, Get my shiner out, my spotter lighter. And see if we can find maybe a genet. Oh, do I have a genet on here? Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't. I think uh, Tessa's got a genet on her uh, board. I don't have any genets there. I know exactly where to get a genet for Tess. <laughs> yes, but this time I'm not going to play nice. Thank you. <laughs> I think uh, one one animal for the day is enough, so yes. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see what we can find. I'm, I'm just uh, still gonna look around this area for other stuff. I haven't been on this road for quite some time, so the Monkey Orange Road, it's pretty much the f furthest uh, western road on uh, Juma. We have got such a cool sighting. Two hyenas with all the impalas running in the background. Now they're moving pretty far over quarantine. So I don't know how long we'll be able to see them for. It looks like a water bucket as well in the background. And another one. 
So they're moving out of range, unfortunately. Towards camp. So it seems like they are on a mission to go and see if there's anything around camp for them. But another hyena sighting. That's the last hyena sighting that I need for the day to tick off every hyena on my board. And there they go. Now we're just seeing eyes and movement. But I will take it. Hyena sighting. And now I want a genet sighting. Very cool, very cool. Please tell me when it is confirmed, lovely Miss Gwyn, and then I shall put it on my board. But I will show you. I put my elephant there. Very exciting. Okay, let's put the lights back on. Tuck that in. Oh, thank you, hyenas. That was very cool. Now I just need a jet. Or a giraffe. Either one. Janet or giraffe. Both preferably. I'm sad we couldn't spend more time with those hyenas. I actually didn't even notice who they were. Oh yeah, confirmed. Okay, I'm not even gonna switch off. I'm going to quickly add it in right there. Here is my last hyena. There it is there. <laughs> so I need a couple there. I need this one and I need this one. Giraffe and Janet. That's what I need. Let's continue. I need to find this Janet. <laughs> but yes, if you do know who those hyenas were, please let me know. It was very quick. Very quick sighting. And I tried to have a look for spot patterns, but didn't get much of a spot pattern, I must be honest. Or an ear pattern. I was just super excited that we were seeing hyenas on the move. And how cool to have those impalas in the background amazing okay come on Janet now I have never been lucky enough to see the Janet that Cedric always talks about on Vertella Access but I do have a secret weapon up my sleeve and that is Mr. Panda because he has seen the Janet and Cedric <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get lucky <laughs> and I have a feeling there's going to be a giraffe at Zoe's Junction for your tele access because sometimes they're around here. We haven't seen them here in a bit. I think it's time they came back. I think it's time. <laughs> but I'm very happy that Cedric found that chameleon on um, is it Monkey Orange, I think it was. Very cool to find a chameleon, it's always such a good feeling. One of those interesting conversations, people always say you can spotlight a chameleon because it's nocturnal. It's not nocturnal. It's diurnal. But people only really see them at night, so they think they're nocturnal, but it's because they have the spotlight that they're seeing in them. Okay, so I'm looking pretty carefully from here. Saw an eye in the grass there. Oh, such a tense moment. I don't see the eye anymore. No! I am a little bit jealous that Cedric and Panda got to see a bush baby yesterday. I haven't seen one in ages. Okay, so we're in the in the right area, Panda. Hmm? A little bit further on. Okay, so I'm going to be looking super carefully from here. Ah. Lynn, chameleons have better vision than us at night, but they have better vision in general during the day because they are diurnal animals. Scrub hair another one this is also on the list <laughs> there it is proving a bit of a challenge with the dust and the insects I think there we go hello scrub hair hello cutie <laughs> so I'm happy I at least found another one because I lost the first one <laughs> uh, and it's more or less in the same area as the genet so that makes me quite happy 
I will do my best to try to find the genet as well. I am feeling very covered in spider webs at the moment. <laughs> and there's insects bouncing around. Can you hear them? It sounds like raindrops. It's actually insects crawling all over us and bumping into everything in the car. <laughs> Especially these chafer beetles. Oh, listen to that wind picking up. Look how the scrub heat changed immediately. It became more alert. So it's listening. This breeze is a leopard's advantage. It's listening very carefully and sticking to a more open area where it's got a longer or wider field of view and a better depth into the bush. So it can keep itself safe and see things coming from a distance. And we are ticking off another one. Thank you to everybody for confirming my scrub hair. There it is there. Pow. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing pretty well today. <laughs> I came back with a vengeance. <laughs> Thank you, Panda. Okay, let me switch this light back on. Scrub hair. Thank you very much. Ooh. I am seeing some eyes in the distance, Panda. Could it be? Are we going to get that lucky? Let me switch this main one off for that scrub there so it doesn't panic. Oh. Do we get bonus points if we fill the whole board? <laughs> I doubt it. But do we get bonus points if we get two bingos on one board? Okay, scrub is gone. Come on, Janet. <laughs> it's amazing how much you focus your attention when you're looking for something very specific. Anything low to the ground, your heart kind of wants to stop. Oh, I've just pulled another insect off of my chest. So this seep line is a pretty popular place for things like civets, servals, genets, African wildcats. A lot of the smaller predators in particular, they tend to enjoy and appreciate this kind of area. I do want to check that very big dead tree because that will have some nice holes in it for a genet. So this kind of area will have a lot of things like rodents and birds, and those are the perfect prey species for something like a small predator. And so it's a really good chance for them to take advantage of that. I feel like this log is the place to be, am I right, Panda? That'd be good. Elaine, without a doubt, the most recognizable call from a nocturnal bird is a fiery necked nightjar. In fact, Panda asked me just now about that call. I am absolutely terrible at imitating it. Terrible. But I'm sure you know what it sounds like. Should I try, Panda? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if I can whistle properly. Okay, let's give it a bash. I can't do the troll, I can't do the troll. I can't do it, I've tried. <laughs> it sounds kind of similar-ish. The first three notes were similar. Then the rest just fell into a little melted puddle. That's what the rest of it did. Sorry, that was also probably very loud. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> you know who could actually do that call is Hat. He can do that call. Hat does amazing bird calls telling you the other day how much he confuses me because we'll be driving and he'll start making the call of a turtle dove and this and that and I'm going, where is that bird? <laughs> where is it? Stop sound, where is it? <laughs> Sounds like it's right on top of me. Well, it is. <laughs> okay. Come on, Janet. I'm literally crossing my fingers now. Will you be in a tree? Will you be on the floor? Where will you be? <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you so much to everybody for rooting for me and this Janet. I can't even imagine the feeling. Actually, I can kind of imagine the feeling of two bingos in one day. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do a little stretch up Aubrey's Road and then I'm going to come back. I want to go all the way up to the top because this section feels like the lucky section. Come on, Janet. Lucky Janet song. Are there any songs about Janet? Anyway, can't think of one. Any songs about small spotted predators? Also, can't think of one. I don't even want to change Wendy out of first gear because I'm. lovely voice in my ear just made up a song about a Janet. I really really like that one Gwen talking to the moon converted. I love it. Hmm. No it's an insect. Ah! <laughs> I'm getting so into it now. Come on. I'm so close. But so far, come on. Okay, I'm going around this next bend, and then I'm turning around. I don't think I've ever searched so hard for a genet in my life. Ah! Okay, I'm gonna tall at that tall, I'm gonna turn at that tall marilla tree. I'm gonna tall at that turn marilla tree. <laughs> So when you are looking for a genet, because there are such active little predators, you've got to be checking pretty much everywhere. Termite mounds, trees, hollows in trees, the grass level, fallen trees, <laughs> everywhere. Try again on where to access. Come on, lucky Janet. Oh, no. Oh, Panda, now I'm double guessing myself. Now I'm going, maybe we should do Aubrey's all the way and then we're going to go shortcut back. <laughs> Gotta find the Janet. Oh, now we're going with the wind instead of against it. Interesting change. up our pace a little bit here just because we have just done this section so oftentimes it happens with predators as well they wait for you to come past because they hear you coming and when you go then they kind of pop their heads out look around and come ambling out of the bush <clears throat> thinking that you've gone not expecting you to come back so soon hmm hmm will this mean any luck i don't know I really hope so. I've still got a little bit of time. All right, and I'm just hearing now that uh, Panda has given my uh, secret a location for that uh, Janet away to uh, Tess, but not for them knowing that I have got a uh, that little Janet and next to me. Yeah. 
Come here. And so I'm sure they will not find that Janet because it's sitting next, nice and comfortable here with me. I will go put you back just now. Shh. <laughs> now I'm just hoping that uh, Tess doesn't come right to that Janet because uh, it'll be very good if she gets uh, two lines and uh, on that uh, board. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm very, uh, yeah, very uh, happy for her, as I said, once again. That's good. Very happy for her. But it's good. Otherwise, it makes a uh, competition for us uh, definitely much more crazier than tomorrow afternoon. And I think it's going to be quite entertaining. Very entertaining, but it's, it's once again it has been just so entertaining just being out here on drive, having this game on the go, and seeing who can get what and how quick and what line can be filled up. And uh, yes, tomorrow is another day. It's going to be quite a hot day tomorrow, so that's what I said. I'm definitely planning and strategizing tomorrow on. Uh, what we will we'll see. I'm just gonna see if we can find a last minute animal. Yeah, we'll take a look here. Right. Let's see. Maybe an African wildcat. Imagine an African wildcat at the end of uh, tonight. It'll be fantastic. Not even anything up here. I must, uh, Fiona, what are the, the four four boards? Huh? A, a full board. Oh, a full board tomorrow. Uh, yeah, well, Fiona, that will be fantastic. If I, if I can, if, 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 if I can get a full bingo board, it will be fantastic. But uh, yes, I'm just going to take a look around the quarantine for the last little bit. But uh, I'm just going to give you the rundown on what has happened today on this Animal Bingo afternoon. The third day of Animal Bingo. So, the final score for day three. It is going to be right at the back. It's uh, Trishala with a two. And uh, Mina, Cedrico. I've got a three. Chris in Prydance. Wow, Chris. Four. Nice. Great. Good, brilliant job, Chris. And then uh, Tess. Well, bingo, bingo, bingo. Tess has got her five for the afternoon. So, yes, well done. Congratulations on that one, uh, Tess. You are brilliant with this one today. And uh, Team Wendy has uh, taken it. But it is all right. Tomorrow will be uh, Team Rusty once again. As I said, tonight I am sitting down and I am going to be doing some studies on uh, on where to go and uh, thinking of the weather, the wind direction, everything tomorrow. I'm going to put all the factors together and uh, sit down there and try and work out. I'm even going to bring a calculator as well to see the board that I'm going to get and which direction I need to go into. But other than that, everybody, thank you so, so much for all the comments, for the questions this afternoon. I'm hoping that we kept you guys entertained at home because you guys definitely kept us entertained here out on uh, safari. And uh, we are definitely hoping that tomorrow morning uh, that you guys will join us once again on our Sunrise Safari. Have a wonderful evening from the Wild Earth team. Good night. and may include animal kills and carcasses. Mm. Viewer discretion is advised.